Oh, boy, the room got real quiet all of a sudden. <laughs> um, good morning, everybody. It is Monday, June 17th, and of your Tampa Bay Water Board of Directors meeting. And um, I will officially call the meeting to order. If everyone will please stand, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance by City Council Member Charlie Miranda. and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you all for coming this morning. Um, we, I will now uh, pass the meeting over to our CEO, Matt Jordan. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good morning, board members. Um, we, uh, the first item we have is a public hearing on the budget and uh, for the FY 2020, uh, pursuant to the budget schedule, the proposed budget has been prepared for fiscal year 2020 and was presented to the board uh, at a workshop on April the 15th, uh, 2019. The budget uh, public hearing was properly advertised in the Tampa Bay Times and the Florida <coughs> Administrative uh, Register in anticipation of this uh, public hearing. And with your permission, Madam Chair, I'd like to call on Christina Saget to present the budget. Great, good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. This presentation provides an overview of the revised proposed fiscal year 20 budget <laughs> with the change approved by the board at the April board meeting and provides another opportunity for any questions or comments. Tampa Bay Water is contractually required to approve a budget by August 1st of each year, so I will be requesting your approval today. Management has worked towards developing the proposed 20 budget that aligns with the agency's three overarching responsibilities and the five goals of the agency's strategic plan. Some of the key attributes of the proposed fiscal year 20 budget include a projected increase of 2.3 million gallons in daily water demand for a total demand of 180.8 million gallons per day, a total of 7 million in pay-as-you-go funding to minimize future debt issuance, which is an increase of 1.6 million from fiscal year 19, board-approved demand management program implementation and funding with fiscal year 2020 incentives of 800,000, maximizing the effectiveness and efficiency of technical staff and management with the request for five new positions, continuation of the agency's merit program at a 4% calculation, providing up to 1.6 million in co-funding to the city of Tampa for the Tampa Augmentation Project, and making fiscal year 20 the ninth consecutive year with a proposed budgeted uniform rate of 2.559 per thousand gallons. This chart shows the agency's source selection for fiscal year 2020 which was established to maximize the use of available surface water and manage groundwater resources to meet permit requirements and achieve environmental recovery. As you can see, groundwater now only accounts for 61% of the supply source used to meet the member demands, as compared to 100% back in 1998. Surface water makes up 34%, and desalinated seawater makes up the remaining 5%. The five positions being requested in the proposed budget include a real estate coordinator, an IT network specialist, an audiovisual specialist, a water resources system engineer, and an administrative assistant. The fiscal year 2020 total costs are 184 million. Variable costs, which consist of chemical and power, totals 26.7 million. The six subcomponents of fixed costs total 157.4 million. Debt, both bond and acquisition credits together, total 80.3 million. Renewal and replacement expenditures are 6.6. .6. Pay as you go funding is 7 million. City of Tampa co-funding, 1.6 million. And the costs for operating the agency are 47.4 million. These consist of routine and non-routine capital purchases, professional services, for the implementation of the demand management program, engineering, ecological, auditing, and personnel services, which include wages, employee insurance, FRS contributions, the request for five positions, 
and the continuation of the agency's merit program. The fiscal year 2020 total adjustments are 13.1 million. These adjustments are other revenue sources the agency receives, such as surcharges, interest income, Tampa bypass canal re revenue, unencumbered funds carried forward, plus transfers from the renewal and replacement fund and the rate stabilization account as listed here. This results in the net revenue required of 169.3 million, which is the water sales total cost to the member governments before any acquisition or water quality credits and is billed separately as a fixed and variable cost components monthly. Tampa Bay Water's fiscal year 20 through 29 capital improvement program provides a 10 year planning schedule, forecast anticipated expenditures and identifies funding options in need. The updated fiscal year 20 to 29 plan includes 93 projects in several stages of their life cycle and projects earmarked to begin within the next 10 years. The majority of these projects address renewal and replacement, improvements, reliability, and safety of the agency's current infrastructure. A few of these projects address supply, such as the Southern Hillsborough County Pipeline and the board approved master water plan projects. Over the next 10 years, projected expenditures for the fiscal year 20 through 29 program is 266.8 million. Through current funds and anticipated pay-as-you-go funding, staff is anticipating being able to cover 49% of these costs, leaving around 136 million of future funding needed. The amount, timing, and source of these funds is analyzed annually, and staff is projected expenditures of 19.7 million in fiscal year 20. These funds are currently on hand and board approval will be requested with resolution 2019-001. Throughout the fiscal year, staff will request board approval for key stages of each project. Again, the proposed 20 highlights include demand of 180.8, five additional positions for a count of 155, total cost of 184 million, rate stabilization fund use of 1.6 million, pay-as-you-go 7 million, net revenue required from water sales of 169.3, a variable rate of 40 cents per thousand gallons, and a uniform rate of 2.5590 per thousand gallons for the ninth consecutive year. The remaining budget actions include receiving any public comment on the proposed fiscal year 20 budget, approving resolution 2019-001, which approves the operating budget and the capital improvement expenditures for fiscal year 20, and accepting the 10-year capital improvement program for fiscal years 20 through 29. At this time, I would be happy to answer any questions before returning the public hearing back to the chair. Thank you very much for that very good presentation. Are there questions? Um, Commissioner Eggers. Um, good morning, thank you for that presentation. Um, just one, a couple of questions for clarification and then a couple of uh, questions on the, the new positions. Um, the pipeline that's in the budget for this coming year, that is the, um, the short-term resolution to the water shortage anticipated in, in South Hillsboro? The pipeline that's in the capital improvement program was the uh, pipeline that was in there um, when we anticipated the demand in 2025, I believe C2, is it C2? Yes, the booster station is the short uh, Can you come to the microphone just so we have it recorded? The booster station that's in I1 and also in C2 is the short term plan that we're proposing to you. The pipeline is a future project uh, after that. And it's in the CIP as a placeholder at $90.5 million. For next year? It will. It's in there, it won't be built in probably after 2024. Okay. If it is the one we pick. We're still working with the county. They have a workshop on uh, June 27th, and uh, it will come back to the board as an MOU if that is what we decide. We still have Sharp out there and the okay. pipeline. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I, think, I think the direction we're headed is the short-term fix, but still with the pipeline in the, in the stream of of the of what we're going to be doing the pipeline is in the 10-year program i don't believe there's anticipated cost for it in fiscal year 20. 
Okay. I just thought I'd, I'd, I'd seen that on the uh, bullet points of uh, South County Pipeline. So that's what it's in for the 10-year program. For the 10-year program. program. Okay. And then, um, then this capital program goes through 2029, and we had talked um, maybe in our meeting, a one-on-one -on -one meeting, that there were some late, uh, in the late 20s, 2026 to 2029, there would be some potential funding issues that we need to deal with. Uh, to kind of off, you know, offset those capital demands. Um, we're just approving the capital plan, but we haven't addressed that financial issue yet. Correct. You're just accepting the 10-year the program and approving the fiscal year 20 spend. Okay. Okay. All right. And then finally, um, of the new, the new positions, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a favorite. It's not my favorite to add positions, and I'm certainly not going to support that today. Uh, I would ask staff if they could uh, p potentially uh, discuss uh, maybe the top two projects that they, the, the top two positions in their minds that if we were to just approve two today, and I'm not saying that's the way the board's going to go, but for me, I'd like to just understand the two most important positions that they've got uh, forecasted, um, if they would take that a moment in time to do that. Thank you. Well, I think for the purpose of the board, especially if we're voting, why don't you run through all five? <coughs> well, it, that's fine, but I'd like staff to come back and tell me. I understand okay. what your request is, but I think for the purposes of us voting on the resolution today, um, and I have asked staff in my briefings about all of the positions, and I did feel that they were justified. But um, I think that, uh, and if you only want to do two, but I think if you could just run through um, all of them, and then uh, answer his request for the top two. She's trying to she has her presentation. She's trying to pull it up. <clears throat> uh, the addition of these five positions will allow technical staff and management to be more effective and efficient. They will address increased tasks from new requirements or project needs, enhance the agency's communications and data analysis, and provide some reduction in professional services. The real estate coordinator will assume some of the increased real estate activity. An IT network specialist will address the growing it, could you tell me how we're dealing with it now? You're talk, you just talked about the real estate person. The real estate one? Yeah, and how we're getting that job done today. Thank you. Uh, the real estate coordinator is, will be in the water production division, and it is at a low level of activity right now. Um, so some of that work is being done in-house by the engineering uh, manager. Um, about 25% of his time is being consumed with that. We have about 900 properties, easements, uh, nearly 10,000 acres uh, with the master water plan and addressing the South Hillsborough County water demands. Real, real estate activity will greatly increase um, and coordinating through a single agency staff member is essential to smoothly manage that increased activity. Uh, the position will also assume some other tasks that are currently being handled by other engineering staff, uh, such as utility conflicts and some of the engineering records management. So some of it is going to take some of the burden of staff, our current engineers, and the senior engineer management. Um, but we are anticipating this activity to greatly increase with the master water plan and the Southern Hillsboro County water demands. And what is the um, outsourced <clears throat> professional services that you had given a write up about that? What are we doing? What are we? What services are we currently using to the tune of about sixty thousand dollars outsourced that we wouldn't be doing? Some of that would be the utility conflicts. Some of that would be some of the um, real estate management. Um, I can't think of all of the real estate management ones. Um, you need, yeah, <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Commissioner, primarily that's uh, adjustments uh, of our 900 easements, somewhere around 2 to 3% of them a year are affected by requiring an adjustment, and right now your engineering staff is accounting that. 
and we are doing that with about a quarter to a third of my time and one of our uh, entry-level engineers about half of her time. And um, we've brought to you this year approximately $4 million of CIP projects for your approval as of this month. Uh, we need to be averaging about seven to eight million dollars of CIP projects annually, averaging annually. And uh, by getting a real estate coordinator back in-house, a position that we had all the way up until 2012, we left it vacant since then. Uh, we've been handling it with staff, but with us growing again, it really is in, we believe it's in the board's interest to have that centralized function with a real estate I'm very similar to the way our three counties are, are organized. Um, and then the comment in here that said that we were reducing outsource, we we're going to reduce by $60,000 in outsourcing of that service. What, what is the outsourcing that we've been doing? Uh, the outsourcing is things like chain of title uh, research, the um, uh, overlap and encumbrance reporting, uh, although uh, some of that still has to be done where we're buying a title insurance policy by a professional, uh, we can do a lot of those, including estimates of value within house staff if we have a qualified property uh, uh, coordinator, and also uh, literally drafting the documents uh, for approval by this board, uh, for consideration by council and approval by this okay, board. Okay, so that's $60,000 is an ongoing expense that we've had. Yes, as an average, understanding that it comes and goes okay. based on development. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, the next position is the Information Technology Network Specialist. Uh, this would be in the Finance and Administration Division. The agency is facing similar challenges that many others, um, and it's becoming more reliant on technology, and IT systems are becoming more intertwined with daily operations. Uh, staff is needed to assist in addressing the emerging requirements and the risks associated with growing operational needs. This position will also assist in maintaining and replacing the agency's aging IT infrastructure. As you know, IT tends to age a bit more quickly than most of the rest of the agency's infrastructure. Um, it's rapidly growing and changing, so this position would be in here to help address some of those needs we're starting to have to uh, replace and maintain more of our IT infrastructure right now than what we've had to in the past. Um, so we need an additional person to be able to help accomplish this and then to help meet some of the cybersecurity requirements and risks <clears throat> that we face with going more towards IT technology and everything that the agency does. And what's, uh, how many people do we have in-house now that work on that? That work in IT? Mm -hmm. That work on the infrastructure, there are three for SCADA and three for the IT infrastructure. And then you have, um, out, you have somebody from the outside that's helping us as well? On the infrastructure part, no. We have outside consultants that help us with some of the applications, some of the software applications. S cyber? Some of it with cyber. Okay. And so there's none, none of this, this position's all internal, and there's nothing that we'd be, we're still outsourcing what we're, we still plan to outsource what we're currently outsourcing. Correct. Okay, thank you. The next position is the audiovisual specialist. It would be in the public affairs division. This um, was one of the positions that was recommended from the last staffing study, and will manage the agency's growing audiovisual systems. Uh, maintaining and upgrading the emergency operations center and the boardroom. Uh, it, with the modernization of audiovisual technology and its change in the uh, workplace, it's a strategic asset and has become more crucial for both internal and external communication. This position would be responsible for also producing video content for communication, such as outreach and education, safety training, conservation campaigns, um, video is, um, social media and videos are the way that most people are communicating now. It's definitely growing. So this position would help uh, produce those videos for us. Uh, and it does offset some, about 33,000 in outsourced professional services uh, that is currently being used to help maintain the audiovisual systems and produce videos, and it is currently some internal staff is 
doing that as well. So this would alleviate some of their time. So, so sometimes we get these, the, our monthly information seems, you know, the information itself is not disjointed. It's really good information, but sometimes the, the presentation and how we get it and the difficulty that we have with it um, is, is a problem. And then like our, our senior executive or the board, the senior, the executive board meeting that we have in, in uh, between the two meetings, it seems like we're getting the minutes from that almost like, like today. Um, do we, do you anticipate either the audio visual or the IT, those, those two positions to be able to augment or help in those two areas that I think are a little, we're a little short on? Uh, definitely the, the audiovisual would be able to help with some of the connection problems that are here. Um, as far as the minutes, I'm not quite sure. If I was thinking about the minutes and also the package that we get every every week or every month or every second month. So. Madam Chair. Um, Mr. <clears throat> Jordan would like to <clears throat> respond to this. Uh, yes, and <clears throat> you know, um, one of the other positions requested is additional administrative staff. We have essentially one uh, admin administrative uh, position that does all those things that you're talking about, also tries to assist the uh, officers and the general manager and others <clears throat> in uh, administrative uh, functions. So it's a combination of probably, you know, that, that position would also uh, make a difference in that area. And we can certainly work to try to move those things up uh, a little more, you know, timely. Uh, but uh, again, one person essentially does all those minutes and preparation right now. Thank you. Oh, okay, so we're on the subject of the minutes. Um, because um, I know another board member requested more detail on some minutes. How exactly are the minutes recorded? How I mean, are they, <clears throat> are they actually recorded like on a recording or is someone manually doing it? Or um, yeah. because of the brevity of the minutes, usually I think we all know in our governments, we have every single word is Verbatim. is revealed <clears throat> it is recorded and revealed and it's actually almost i think ours are up uh 48 hours after the board meeting um so i wonder if that's something i mean if we're going to if we i assume we'll move forward with this position but i was hoping that maybe they <clears throat> could help us in finding a better system to record our minutes so to increase the transparency, mm. I think, with the public. Does that mm. make sense mm. to you all? Uh, because they do kind of come out pretty late. <clears throat> um, so I don't know who can answer that, but. <clears throat> well, the, the, we do have the audio and the visual recording of the board meeting. We have audio of the executive, and <clears throat> they are typed up, and it's pretty much been the tradition to type up the motions and those things in the, in the discussion. Um, and I think the request is maybe we need to move to more verbatim overall discussion, which we can certainly do. I, I think because of the topics that we're covering and, um, you know, the, you know, just the general nature of our business is, has really, uh, the demand has increased quite a bit since I've been on this board eight and a half years. So I think, and, um, I, I think if we're going to approve this position, I hope that they can assist with coming up with a better method to record our minutes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mayor Marlow. Uh, just a comment. I can't speak for any of the other members uh, here today, but in Newport Ritchie, we live broadcast our uh, city council meetings, and those broadcasts are available for later uh, viewing <coughs> online as well. And that's as verbatim as it gets. And actually, I imagine almost every government live broadcasts our meetings. Um, so I, I guess what I'm saying is that I think that should also be available. I think we just need to have a complete overview of the process and have staff come back to us at our next board meeting with what their recommendation is. Mr. Jordan. Yes, ma'am. And and I understand, and we're certainly welcome any uh, uh, request that the board has. Uh, in, in answering uh, um, Mayor Marlowe's question, we do have a stream. You can view our meetings on your computer uh, as they are broadcast, and also on our website, 
you can go to our website and you can <clears throat> watch. Um, we keep some board meetings about a year, maybe worth of board meetings posted directly. You can download. Is that correct, Ms. Tom? So you can <clears throat> go to your computer and you can read, watch any board meeting and you see the uh, audio and hear the, hear the audio and, and see the visual. But yeah, we, we certainly understand uh, uh, and we'd like to uh, discuss it and I think we can accommodate the request, certainly. Okay, uh, Council Member Rice. Um, thank you, Chairwoman, and I totally uh, uh, agree with um, your suggestions and where we're headed on this. Um, I would also add, um, it just seems that there's a lot of committees affiliated with Tampa Bay Water, and I'm not even sure sometimes how many there are, and it doesn't seem like we're always privy to the minutes of those meetings, such as in Section J1 on page 4, there's reference to a WQWC. Um, so in addition to getting better minutes of our regular meetings, I'd like to have some sense of tracking uh, the what's happening in the, these meetings, even when the meetings are. Mm -hmm. um, some of you have been on re the Regional Planning Council. I, I don't know what software, what system they use, but they provide a verbatim transcript of their executive committee meeting. Yeah. I think that's we have to move in that direction. I really do. Um, I do think this position, though, is very important because it was a recommendation from the external study that um, uh, Ms. Stom has been working on for quite some time. Uh, it's very clear that most people don't know who we are and what we do. Um, and, you know, the only way we're going to improve that amount of information, getting to um, all of our ratepayers, is to make sure we have a well-staffed public affairs division. Any other comments? I, I just want to... Oh, final. yes, we have to... Con well, just please. one final one. Um, yeah, and in and, and our... Again, just from, from a simplicity standpoint and bringing all the information together for a board meeting, uh, we use a Granica system, and I think it's not like, I think other groups do that too. We're trying to get all of our entities in the county to move towards that system. It's a really comp compact way to pull all the information together, and it's easy to access, and there's never, there's never <clears throat> issues. And each item you can load individually all of the backup that you need. It's just a little cleaner, easier way to do it. Um, but the timing of those minutes on, this, on the executive meeting are also important, that we get them within a couple of weeks and not right before this meeting. Because sometimes our folks can't get to it, and that, that, would be, that would be helpful too. So thank you. OK, next position. Uh, the next position is the Water Resources System Engineer, which would be in the Science and Technical Division uh, with this position would be responsible for maintaining the timely model readiness for current and future decision support, which is facing increased needs with the master water plan feasibility studies and the upcoming consolidated well field permit renewal. Uh, this position will also address some succession planning uh, to retain some valuable modeling knowledge within the agency. And the final position is the administrative assistant position that uh, Matt mentioned earlier. This position would be in the science and technical division. Uh, previously, we had several full-time administrative assistants. Uh, as they retired, we determined the need was better used, the FTE was better used in different places. Um, as Matt said, there is one administrative assistant within the agency and then Matt's executive assistant. Um, so this position would take on some of those administrative tasks, um, helping the manager and the other technical staff get back to their core duties and help uh, Kathleen with the minutes from the executive committee meeting and the board meeting. And then one okay. final, one mm -hmm. final comment. Um, <clears throat> just I'm, I'm just hearing that um, that at the at the county that we're we're talking about uh, new positions, uh, having discussion about what their advantages are, why they're important, uh, in-source, outsourcing benefits. At the same time, uh, something new apparently is being added, which I'm really happy to see, and that is kind of a 10-year justification for the position. So it's not just a, <clears throat> oh, we think we need some help in the next couple of years, because these are, these are long-term kind of commitments. So I think it would be helpful um, in the future if we can see um, 
where the staff that's recommending these positions sees that position evolving um, as, as Tampa Bay Water moves forward and that 10-year uh, horizon. So okay. thank you. And then just a quick comment on maybe the order of priority from, from Matt. Okay. Um, are you, you're done with all positions? Okay. Mr. Jordan, would you like to reply to his request for prioritizing? Uh, yes, ma'am, and thank you. Uh, you know, when we look at these, we do consider the, the length of the need, uh, the expertise. If it's something that we don't have the expertise and it's a short-term need, that typically uh, leads us toward contracting that, that work. If we do see it as an ongoing evolution of the agency or a critical need to provide additional support or to improve <clears throat> efficiency that is long-term, then we make those recommendations. Um, as I look at all of these positions and as, as I reviewed them all with staff, I saw you know, and believe that there is a need to help with the evolution of the agency, the um, uh, efficiency, and um, <clears throat> um, also cybersecurity, which is an ongoing uh, issue for all of us. Um, <clears throat> so the... Um, the engineer for um, uh, um, the water resources system engineer, <clears throat> that's also an evolution where we're going through a <clears throat> master water plan updates. We're getting into projects. We're getting ready to move toward building <clears throat> uh, some of these projects. And so that's part of the evolution. And also this position will be helping with um, the consolidated permit renewal, which is certainly critical. And it's also could be part of our succession planning as we have other senior staff doing some of this work will be ultimately, <clears throat> maybe one day, and hopefully not too soon, <clears throat> uh, retiring. So, <clears throat> you know, the way I would answer the question, maybe a slightly versus what are the top two, I would say that I believe that they are all uh, certainly will help. Um, critical need, do we really have to have all of these? Well, you the the audio video uh, specialist, uh, you know, there's there's advantages to doing that, uh, but we certainly something that if we don't do it, we can continue contracting it, and we would not have to do it. Uh, the other four, <clears throat> you know, I think they're all equally important. Uh, so that's what I, uh, what I would offer. Okay, and Councilman Miranda. No, I, I pass. I've got enough. Here. You do. Okay. Um, any other comments? Okay. The next, um, now that we've heard the presentation from the staff, we'll go into public comment and then uh, board action on the resolution from there. Um, the, I only have one person signed up for public comment on the budget, and that is Mark Clutho. Mark Lutho, Largo. Well, I have to say, I really liked the graphics that went with that presentation. Mm -hmm. They were outstanding. And those five positions. <laughs> I, I don't know where you're going to fit those people into this building. Yeah, the uh, supposed... Uh, First green public building in Tampa Bay. Uh, yes. And you're talking about 10 year planning? Uh, what a joke. And you talk about increased efficiency. Oh. Uh, and every time I come in here, I look at the lighting system. And you using the word efficiency. What a farce. What a farce. Yeah. I mean... 
you wouldn't know efficiency if it slapped you in the face. Yeah. A supposed daylit building. Yeah, this is a funny looking daylit building. Yeah, five new employees at the trough. Doggone shame, I'll tell you. But 10 years, I don't think you have a clue what's coming in 10 years. No. But I'll get into that a bit more when I speak in our next section. Thank you. And that is the only speaker I had signed up for public comment on the budget. Is there anyone else that would like to be heard? Okay, I'll now close the public hearing and ask for board uh, motion on our fiscal year 2019 through 2020 budget. Madam Chairman, before we close, I'd like to ask uh, on this budget, and I, I, maybe it's there, I just didn't see it. Is this the demand? management portion or the conservation portion that I voted against since I've been here, we have money set aside to tell the public what we do. In my opinion, we have really six member, uh, six votes, Pinellas, Pasco, I mean Pinellas, Pasco, and Hillsborough County. We have nine members. So who are we advertising to? We're wholesalers. Do we have any money in there for? For the demand management implementation For program? advertising what you do. To, to the broader scope for the, the broader region. scope within the demand management implementation mm -hmm. plan that's in um, the J presentation but there is some advertising monies in there to advertise out to all of the member governments once they participate in the program mm -hmm. six members that participate in the program thank you um, well that brings up a good point because you know I've since I've been on this board and I think you've probably aligned with me is that the outreach to the member governments and to our communities has always been something that I would like to see expanded uh, going forward. And um, I'm, I'm hoping that this position were, um, this external communications position is going to help with some of that communication because I, I really, every single year, like, what's the outreach to the member governments and our constituents? And so um, I'm hoping that there will be a plan coming back to us uh, from uh, the addition of this new position that will give us some direction about how we're going to communicate. Is that what you're asking for? Well, in a way, because maybe my feeling is different than anyone else. I really don't know. But when you have six members, and I've said this, what I'm going to say again uh, years back, when you buy, go buy gasoline at the gas station and you're pumping the gas, do you really ask yourself, where does the oil come from? Mm -hmm. Do you think the water customers are saying, what, where does the water come from? I can go into more explicit details of what's happening in the ta city of Tampa, but I'm not. I can tell you one little thing. I did visit the Children's Museum the other day, and there was a nice, nice thing that you all did about water, but I left it with the impression that you're the service person for all of Tampa, which is not correct. And I'm not here to, to do anything else, just to say it. When I looked at the management of the proposal on these uh, budget items, although you simplify the, the chart when you say, here's the growth of every city and here's the, what's going to happen in the county, which is great, don't get me wrong, really appreciate that. But at the end, you put a map of different areas and the impression that you get by reading it, because in every place else, you got the city of Tampa saying 2%, you got somebody 60%, 40%. But when you come to that map, it doesn't tell you anything about the percentage. So you have the impression and uh, that all of the service area of Pasco, Pinellas, and Hillsborough is Tampa, uh, Tampa Bay water. And it's confusing enough when you have Tampa Bay water in the city of Tampa on the same thing, because which Tampa is it? That's all. 
Okay, so I think you, we've given you some clear direction. We'd like to see a kind of a strategic plan on outreach communications, both externally and internally uh, for our board. Uh, Mr. Jordan. Yes, ma'am, and thank you, Madam Chair. And I certainly, uh, we've had you know several discussions about your, your desire to see more outreach, and we've been working toward that, and we certainly appreciate and understand the importance of that. Um, one thing about the conservation program or the demand management program, you, the board is scheduled to receive a presentation on that later on on the agenda. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, some months ago, we came before the board asking the question, uh, we, we knew there was some co-funding grant, block grant potentially available uh, for Tampa Bay Water to work with member governments. We had that discussion <clears throat> and the board Ultimately, at that time, approved us moving forward with you know working with the district to try to secure co-funding, which that Tampa Bay Water Share, uh, the, or the member government share, is in the current budget proposal. Um, and what you're going to receive this afternoon is we told you also that we would come back and talk about how we would administer that, and how we would work with each member of government uh, moving forward. So there's there's the same program, but there's two different aspects of it. But it is in the budget. The funding, uh, obviously, uh, and each year the, the board will review this program to determine the overall effectiveness, and, and Mr. Brasciano will provide much more information. But I did want to provide that clarity about what's in the budget, what you will see later. Very good. Um, Mr. Agri? Yeah, just a couple of things. Uh, Matt, I'm a, you made a comment. I, I said the thing about the 10-year yes, kind of forecast on these positions. Um, you made the comment that you you are looking at. So you consider these 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 five position six position five positions permanent. Well, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> as you look at any organization, things change over time. We don't see them as short term. To answer your question, we see that this is ongoing, uh, and uh, things will continue to evolve. If things were to change, we would change with them. But right now, our perspective is we're not just you know we certainly don't want to you know, add a position. To eliminate a position in a year or two so 10 years i mean we do look for a longer term is, is it longer than a short-term need and do we believe it will continue and and the, we've looked through all of these and we believe that uh that there will be a need to continue uh these uh if it comes to the point where we no longer need them we'll certainly address that but so you don't you don't feel like we have staff available then to repurpose their jobs into these kinds of these <clears throat> five that we're talking about today <clears throat> Well, um, you know, the, with the additional work and the transition that we're doing, uh, the evolution, getting back into building, you know, uh, projects, uh, master water plan projects coming up, and also the needs in South Central Hillsboro. <clears throat> we've talked about that one. We've talked about the administrative needs because you know, the board, <clears throat> you know, and we certainly understand wants different um, minutes and di in a more timely fashion. That will certainly help there also help relieve some of the other um, managers in administrative tasks. Um, so looking at all those things and the, the uh, audio visual and the video production, you know, public outreach, all those type things, uh, social media, you know, we see that as ongoing. Uh, but again, you know, down the road, if we do get to a point where we're not building things and we don't need that position, we can either repurpose that position or we could look to see we don't, and as vacancies occur, we wouldn't fill it. Okay, well, that's fine. I appreciate you taking the time to go through these positions. I think it's critically important. You know, we're, we're, our, we have a 4% increase in our operating costs across the board as far as, you know, that annual increase. <clears throat> and by adding these five positions, we're actually increasing um, probably to the tune of about 3% of our staff. You know, and I think that's a significant increase in one year. I understand. So I just think it's extremely important that we we do look at this. I know permanent is a stretch. No, 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 no nothing's ever permanent, but I do think we need to be thinking about it in those terms. And uh, um, so I, you know, a half a million dollar increase on the budget. You know, in a hundred eighty whatever what is a hundred eighty four million dollar budget is probably not that big, but that's not the point. Mm -hmm. So I hope that uh, we continue to scrutinize these positions as you add them instead of considering the outsourcing that is kind of what we've been doing a little right. of. So I right. uh, appreciate it. Thank you. And I'm sure Councilman Miranda and I, are, I think we're the longest serving on this board. 
You right might now. be. I'm the youngest. No, <laughs> please. Um, but when we, uh, when I came on this board in 2010, we were in the recession, and we did through attrition. I, you have to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we uh, lowered the number of positions, and that was because <clears throat> there wasn't a lot going on. And so I think, aren't we like back to more of a normal number? I, think I, I don't know. And I think maybe for purposes of this, it'd been nice to see where we were over the years and the number of employees <clears throat> that we had. Um, but our, I, I think we're almost back to normal, aren't we? Or maybe a little above. I think we might be just a little above from where we were before. But I know we did decrease the number of employees for a certain period of time just through natural attrition and because of the recession, mm -hmm. there just wasn't the amount of work right. uh, that was there. So um, I, I think that their staff is just, you know, I think they're evaluating staff and the workload that each staff member can have. Uh, but, you know, in this, in this kind of organization, you know, 95% of the work is pretty normal. And it's going to go on whether there's a downturn or not. You're just talking about how much water you're producing. So I just think when we add these specialized positions, and not all of these were specialized positions uh, versus outsourcing, and I think we have to be very mm -hmm. careful uh, as agree. we start to add back people. I remember my first year here, we added one or two people, and we said, well, we hardly ever add anybody. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we added two, and it was like that was a big deal. Well, we've you know added five this year. So anyway, thank you for for uh, accommodating my questions. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. And now I'll entertain a motion on the fiscal year 2019-2020 budget. Move approval. So, okay, we have a motion to approve and a second. Is there any further discussion or questions? Seeing none, um, do we need a roll call vote on the budget? You're not required to have one, but you okay. may if that's your preference. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Aye. Show the budget pass. Um, thank you very much. <clears throat> Worked very hard. Okay. We excuse me. Now open the regular board meeting and we'll move into the public comment. Uh, portion of the meeting. Our first speaker is Mark Clutho. Mark Clutho, normal. There isn't anything normal here. That's, that's all wrong. Here's the headline, CO2 level highest in human history. 415 parts per million. And this headline, we're in trouble. UN report warns that humans are threatening their own futures by accelerating the extinction of over a million species. Yeah, and uh, you're uh, talking about your regional demand management and member government water conservation. And I remember you crying, you wanted Money from BP because you couldn't sell your water. And you're talking about water conservation. Uh, what hypocrites. What hypocrites. And then here's the headline from May 15th. Rising tide of dire warnings from bad to worse scientists present new sea level rise findings. Yeah, and you're talking about 10 year planning. What a joke. And here's today's paper. Democrats, bring your climate plans. 
This is for the debates. And in this editorial, nearly half of Florida's 67 counties participate in resiliency coalitions, including one for Tampa, Tampa Bay region, exploring ways to mitigate the effects of a warming climate. Well, that word should be reactionary. That's what you are, reactionaries, see? Because when you're stupid, and I said to make a high performance passive solar building before you made this ignorant monument that is belching the carbon into the atmosphere, <clears throat> you just don't get it. Look at all the fools wearing coats when we're going to have another day. Heat index 95 Thank degrees. Thank you. Bunch of sickos. Thank you. Next speaker is David Geddes. Good morning. Uh, David Ballard Geddes, Jr. I live on Georgia Avenue in Palm Harbor. The county has been sold to the water district in what's commonly known as a fee simple title, which is a 30 year foreclosure of, of the county. Over the next few years, the functions of the county ad valorem, such as the school system, law enforcement, and fire department will one by one be placed under district control and the county will be simply dissolved <coughs> as the, will be simply dissolved as the water district, as unelected officials assume powers of government, the county being sold again in, in both resolution and ordinance, again seen as a fee simple title, as a 30 year foreclosure in statute law <coughs> stemming from the Magna Carta. During this critical posture of usurpation, working as process of aggregating future political powers, treasonous factions in and of the existing political structure are attempting to contaminate and further pollute the remaining groundwater supply by directly injecting reclaimed water into the aquifer, intending to destroy our children's future prospect of a viable water supply using water as a Second Amendment weapon of choice, destroying taking liberty, property, and life as so-called due process in the 14th Amendment. I ask, in 30 years after all this constitutional betrayal and uncivilized governmental discourse takes place, what court system do I use to challenge such a barbaric constitutional <laughs> undertaking in and on its face? Will the water district assume and accept responsibility of and for the current political scheme as the current constitution is in actuality an orchestrated act of treason in and of itself. Directly injecting reclaimed water into the aquifer is not a best use practice of disposing our gray water. Directly injecting fecal nitrates into the aquifer is a loaded gun and is intent on laying the civilian population to bear. In order to protect civilian life, we need to deal with this 14th Amendment jurisdictional issue. We need to do this now. Um, I've recommended other options before the board, and um, I'm displeased at the way the conduct of the government is with this direct injecting of reclaimed water. And um, if we're going to assume uh, water districts, um, mm -mm. we need to adjust the tax base. Um, I, I, I reject a tax base in the form of a levy. Um, so thank you for letting me share. Thank you. Um, next speaker is Dean Levengood. Good morning. Good morning, Chair, members. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak today and for your public service and 
protecting our public interest. Um, I do appreciate the comments about climate change and uh, concerns about the injection in the aquifer. But as we stated in our tri-league letter of April 15th, we've outlined some of our concerns and we appreciate that you're looking at those. The league supports uh, the investigation and use of alternative water supplies as needed in our region in the future. If the process is transparent and public and the proposed process and procedures use best practices and meet appropriate scientific standards and values. So um, we thank you very much for considering all of that as you move forward. We are really interested in the Tampa augmentation proposal. Uh, the agreement and memorandum of understanding that was discussed last time, the feasibility study, and how they're proceeding. And very much appreciate your comments about communicating with the public and how you communicate. Um, because we would like very much to be added to any notice lists that you have about upcoming meetings and information that is available about these items as they move forward, um, because we haven't been receiving any and we don't hear about them. This is why we're coming to these meetings now, and we hope that uh, we can work better, a little bit better together in the future. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, we also are participating in the development of the framework for the Potable Reuse Commission that's being discussed statewide. So we're monitoring that, we're involved in that, and we hope that you also are taking a look at what's being proposed because moving forward, we want to use the best standards. In light of the importance of public process and transparency, we also wanted to bring to your attention some concerns um, that we've heard expressed and questions raised about how perhaps the earlier process moving to bring to your attention the, and the vote, the agreement and the MOU um, happened. Um, it's been suggested that because some of the government attorneys were appointed by you to directly represent you in the negotiations of preparing those documents, and that they were brought to you um, without adequate notice to the public, or and that you didn't actually have an opportunity to review them over long term either, um, that, um, and we weren't aware that there were staff review and recommendations about them as well, uh, that maybe uh, they didn't meet Sunshine Law requirements. And so um, I don't know whether that's accurate or not. The League is not taking a position on that, but we did want to bring that to your attention because the perception is that things have Thank not you. been very transparent and that Thank the processes you. followed were not normal. Thank you for Thank your you. thoughtful consideration. Thank you. Okay, we will now move to our regular agenda. And the first um, item up is our consent agenda. Is there any discussion or uh, Councilwoman, Councilwoman Rice? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. At my one-on-one -on -one meeting with staff last week, I had requested that consent items D3, D4, D5, and D6 be pulled for reports. And that D3 kind of correlates with I1. D4 and D5 correlates with item J3. And D6 correlates with uh, the regular agenda item J2. Okay. And um, yes, Mr. Jordan? Yes, ma'am. And we did have that discussion, and, and we are prepared to um, present those items at the board's request. Okay, so you're going to present those there's separately? A, well, on your agenda, there's a, uh, unless you want to put them as part of another presentation, there is a place on our agenda for, uh, I believe, for any items. Uh, yeah. Item F, consent discussion, mm -hmm. is where they could go. Uh, certainly, if you'd like to have those in conjunction with another regular Good. presentation, I would imagine we could do that as well. Okay, I think what she said was some of the items are related to other items on the agenda. Right. And not, I, so, no, I understand we're having consent discussion right now, but I think she wants them pulled, and, but we will have to bring them up and uh, vote on them at some point on the agenda. Okay. Um, 
as they relate. So D3, that relates to which item? I1. I1, just so I get this noted. So we will bring up D3 when we discuss I1. D4. D4 and D5 relate to item J3. Okay. And then D6. D6 relates to item J2. J2. Okay, and we will bring them, uh, those up separately. Um, those are our presentations, but we will bring up D6, like, for instance, for a discussion, and we'll vote on it at that time. Okay, um, so do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda um, as presented, except for the items D3, D4, D5, and D6? So moved. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Like, sign, oppose. Show the consent agenda pass, except for items D3, 4, 5, and 6. And we will now go to the regular agenda. And Mr. Jordan, you're recognized. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and uh, the uh, executive committee did meet uh, on May 20th, and uh, you have the minutes from that meeting. I think uh, uh, pretty much all the items that were discussed at executive are somewhere uh, else on the agenda. Um, in the way of just uh, my report, I would like to uh, report a couple items. Uh, the first one is uh, I did meet with the executive director of the Southwest Florida Water Management District uh, on June 6th <clears throat> at his request uh, to talk about uh, water, regional water issues, reclaimed water, <clears throat> things of that nature. And he did uh, indicate that um, he was going to have, uh, the, the district was going to hold a workshop just prior to their August 27th um, regular board uh, governing board meeting <clears throat> and that uh, <clears throat> we were certainly invited and along with the other member governments and also the the Polk County uh, Regional Water uh, Authority uh, our folks as well <clears throat> so uh, he did indicate that uh, you know after that discussion there could very likely there may be some sub subsequent meetings um, and uh, I will certainly we plan to attend the workshop and we'll certainly <clears throat> continue to keep the board informed. Um, I thought the workshop was for everyone. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> anyone can certainly come. It's a, it's a public uh, meeting. It's the governing board meeting. Uh, <clears throat> and the other workshops that will be, that may happen after that uh, could be, that's my understanding. And we've had <clears throat> some additional conversations since then, but <clears throat> I think there's a, representative from the district uh, in the audience. I'm not sure if they, they have any other clarification or not, but. Um, Joel, are you here? <clears throat> Joel here? Joel, stop looking. <laughs> Around for Joel. <laughs> um, I, I thought when I talked to Brian, he said he wanted all of us to have a workshop with all of us. Is that not correct? Or was it just staff? This would be a public, Joel Brown, Southwest Florida Water Management District. This would be a public supply workshop that will be held prior to the governing board meeting. Uh, every member of government represented here at Tampa Bay Water has come in for cooperative funding projects at different times and had different partnerships with the district. So obviously we're familiar with all the stakeholders and everyone that would be affected would be invited to that workshop. Okay, so we will all be invited. Yes. Also. Yeah, through the normal noticing process and, and with our governing board agenda. Very good. Okay, yes, thank, you. thank you. And once that goes out, we'll certainly share that with all the board and the board members. <clears throat> the, uh, the other item I'd like to mention is <clears throat> Tampa Bay Water did receive uh, some recognition. <clears throat> this is the um, Water Research Foundation Subscriber Award. Very nice. Um, and, um, That's beautiful. Yeah. And um, we're certainly very pleased to receive that. We have been Tampa Bay Water no, has been a member um, of this organization for quite a number of years, over 20 years. And um, the award represented uh, was presented last week at the um, Foundation Subscriber Appreciation Awards Breakfast at the ACE Conference in Denver, Colorado. Um, the Outstanding Subscriber Award for Applied Research honors subscribing utilities that have successfully applied the foundation's uh, research and to make notable improvements in their water treatment, delivery, and management processes. 
and we're certainly honored to be recognized uh, by the, um, the uh, Water Research uh, Foundation, and uh, you know the board has <clears throat> continued to support us and our membership for many years, which we do appreciate as well, along with the agency staff <clears throat> that have uh, worked very hard in cooperation. We have benefited from this quite a bit, and also the member governments have access to a lot of research data because uh, of our membership. So. Uh, Again, uh, we certainly appreciate the recognition, and, uh, and and I very much appreciate all of our staff and the member governments and the board's support uh, as we continue to partner this partnership. And that's that's all I have, unless there's other questions, Madam Chair. Any questions? Congratulations. Well, thank you. Great. Um, <clears throat> now move to General Counsel's report, um, Barry and Ventura. Um, thank you, Madam Chairman, members of the board. Um, for item H1, as we do every year at the first board meeting after the legislative session concludes, we have your lobbying team present a summary of the legislative session to the board. I'll now turn it over to the agency's lobbying team, Peter Dunbar and Matthew Blair. Madam Chair, thank you. Um, there is a um, written report that accompanies your agenda materials. Let me briefly summarize it. Uh, there are some appropriation items there, one of which includes Representative Toledo's uh, $1.6 million request for the city of Tampa that is not in the final budget. The other is the agency's item, and Mr. Blair will be discussing that in a moment. There are a few items of substantive legislation that did pass and touch upon the operation of the agency and also, I think, on the member governments that uh, deal with financial accountability. Um, and deal with financial disclosures. Um, those are summarized in the report as well. I've also included a few measures of interest that did not pass, but we've already begun a dialogue with some of the members. The session will begin early in 2020, um, and we expect that uh, most of those will be back, uh, and some were close to passing, uh, so they'll be back in uh, 2020. They include the uh, anti-fracking legislation, also a uh, number of measures that deal with water quality. Uh, Matt, you want to explain the status on the budget? Sure, absolutely. So uh, legislatively, Tampa Bay Water put forward a funding request for the Eldridge Wild Pumps Motors Replacement Project, and we were successful legislatively in securing uh, three quarters of a million dollars in that, 750,000, that's in line 1657A of the budget. The governor received the budget on Friday of last week. That starts a constitutional 15-day clock for the gover governor to act. He has the option to either allow the budget to become law without signature, he can sign it into law, or he can exercise line item veto authority on any item in the budget. And so obviously, over the next several days, we're eagerly awaiting the governor's final decision. Uh, we've been actively and continue to actively work uh, to, to do what we can to, to assure uh, securing that funding in the budget, keeping it in the budget, and we'll report back uh, via email to the general manager and to the team, then for dissemination to you all, the, uh, uh, the resolution of that once we know it uh, from the governor's action. Madam Chair, that would be our report unless there are questions. Short and sweet. Any questions? Comments? No, thank you all very much. And then the second item on your agenda. Um, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, item H2 um, regards um, some follow-up action from the April meeting. When the board requested analyses of several interlocal agreement issues and asked that we consult with the attorneys participated in the drafting of the interlocal agreement and the master water supply contract, as well as the member government attorneys. For background, legal services during governance negotiations were provided by two law firms, Neighbors Giblin and Nickerson, um, specifically George Nickerson, who was the primary drafter of the interlocal agreement based on negotiated terms amongst the member governments, and Tom Giblin, who was the primary drafter of the master water supply contract, and he continues as your bond counsel today. We also had the Pennington Law Firm. Pete Dunbar, who was with the Pennington Firm at that time, handled the legislative aspects of the process, including the enabling legislation. He also worked with neighbors Giblin and Nickerson to assure the interlocal agreement and master water supply contract were compliant with the legislation. The Pennington Firm took the lead on the property transactions necessary to create the agency. 
and Pete has also served as interim general counsel for the agency on several occasions. The agency's in-house counsel at that time were my law partner, Don Kahn, who served as general counsel then and for a number of years, and I was also agency counsel at that time. Following the April meeting, I surveyed the member government attorneys for their availability to discuss the issues raised by the board, and the first time when all are available is this afternoon, so we will be meeting in this building today at 1.30. The meeting is intended to provide an opportunity for discussion of the legal issues raised by the board. Not knowing if any board member might choose to listen in on the discussion, I noticed the meeting as a sunshine meeting to avoid any concerns about more than one board member being present in a room where issues will be discussed that may come back to the board for discussion or action at a later date. In May, I met with the governance attorneys to ask for their participation and give them some background on the issues discussed by the board so they would have some context for the request. Mr. Nickerson, in particular, has not worked on Tampa Bay water issues since the late 1990s. At our initial meeting, we reviewed the motions made by the board and developed a list of issues we believe to be pertinent to those requests. The issues identified come from the motions made at the April board meeting, as well as questions raised by board members at recent meetings. The list is in your agenda materials and was provided to the board a few weeks ago as well. When discussed at last month's executive committee meeting, a request was made for Mr. Nickerson to attend today's meeting, and he is here today. We would welcome your input on the list of issues and ask that you remove any issues that you do not want addressed by the attorneys. Finally, Mr. Nickerson is available to come to the podium if you would like him to do so. Anybody want Mr. Nickerson? Could you please point him out? <laughs> yeah, well, that's how, I think that's, could you stand please? Um, Great to see you here. Thank you for coming. Thank and you you'll for being be at here. the meeting this afternoon. Okay. Um, yes. Um, and I do have some concerns, and I can wait till 1.30 uh, this afternoon when I believe we schedule time to speak with Mr. Nickerson after the board meeting. May I address? Yes. Okay. Um, we do have the meeting scheduled for the afternoon where um, all the member government attorneys and the governance attorneys have been invited to attend, and I've told they will be there. Um, the purpose of the meeting is for you know, discussion amongst the attorneys. Um, it's my understanding, and I would certainly welcome Mr. Nickerson to speak to this um, himself, that he has not come to today's meeting with any opinions formed but rather he wanted to have time this afternoon to speak with the attorneys, hear from them. Um, certainly board members are, are welcome to attend that meeting if they desire, um, but I, if your expectation is that he will be providing definitive answers to those questions, um, we can arrange for that another time, but it um, probably would not be this afternoon. Right, no, no, um, thank you, I, I appreciate that. Actually, and I think, uh, the city of St. Pete is pretty much on the record for speaking to our concerns about the uh, related to uh, the TAP project. Um, and actually, I don't want to get too bogged down talking about TAP uh, in this board meeting. I think that uh, the, the two really big important issues for this board and our job is really to focus on the long-term water master plan and uh, demand management and conservation issues. So um, I had requested at our, at our last meeting, I believe you all recall, I had requested for copies of um, uh, detailed staff time and the billings from uh, various attorneys who've been working on TAP. And in light of the 4,500 something staff hours and the $100,000 in attorney fees already spent, I think right now it might be appropriate to place some limits to ensure a reasonable and appropriate amount of time. And I'm gonna motion to authorize a limit of $5,000 total for Dunbar, Nickerson, and any other attorney fees. Um, if more is needed, um, the attorneys can certainly come back to the board, um, report progress, and explain why additional uh, money is needed, and the board can make that decision at that time. 
Okay, we have a motion. Um, I, I, I'm sure there will be questions. Um, I have an initial question: Is you mean on this particular, on these eight as it, five thousand dollars in relation to the eight questions that we want answered? Um, in relation to TAP, let me find those eight questions in front of me. These eight questions and just um, any time spent negotiating, talking to Tampa, Swift Mud, you know, the board needs to have a sense of how much staff and attorney time is spent in pursuit of the TAP project. And in St. The city of St. Pete, which is my own reference point, I mean, as you all well know, I mean, we were under a federal consent order dealing with our uh, sewer issues, and our council put um, our, um, not our staff attorneys, but when we had to hire special outside counsel, that attorney was on a $5,000 retainer who would come back to the city and indicate if they needed more funds and then explain to the council um, the work they were doing, the direction of the work, and an anticipation of how much time that would take. So along the way, we always knew how much money was being expended towards our attorney's efforts. OK, so and, just and we were always ha I'm sorry, we were always happily generally, you know, it was reasonable. It was always you know, happy to grant uh, the request for more funds. But the point was is that the board was in the driver's seat. Okay, first things first, um, there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? For the $5,000 limit? Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Okay, um, I do want to clarify something. Um, Ms. Blanfordura works for us. Pete Dunbar works for Tampa Bay Water. They are not one in the same. Right. So. If we're limiting his, uh, and that's why I asked you about the eight questions because there are other legal matters that um, Mr. Dunbar <clears throat> does address, not just TAP. No, it applies to TAP. Okay. 5,000 CAP related to TAP. To TAP, mm -hmm. okay, that's clarified. Um, okay, any questions? Uh, Ms. Boyan-Venture? Yes, I would like to um, provide the board a little bit of information, please. Um, at every board meeting in your agenda package, um, there is a legal report under receive and file that provides information to the board regarding um, expenditures under the legal budget, um, and it includes a specific amount that is has been paid to each law firm on a monthly basis. So there are two spreadsheets provided to show the board how much has been spent and paid to each law firm. Um, I would also point out that this board meets only every two months. And with um, a $5,000 restriction that would be paid collectively to um, Neighbors Giblin and Nickerson and to uh, the Dean Mead law firm with respect to TAP expenditures, um, that would be very restrictive to and would slow this process down um, so that in the event $5,000 did not cover um, the full amount of the work, there would be a delay before we could come back and ask the board for an additional expenditure. I will tell you that it is my intention to move this process along. I do not intend um, for this uh, to drag on for months. It would be my um, intention to try to bring to the board the answers to your questions at the August meeting. If we're not able to do that due to summer vacation schedules or just difficulty in getting people together, then October would be the fallback. But it is not my intention that this would drag on for a long time. Um, I would also ask, before we move past this item, um, for board action on the list of issues that are before you today. If you have any that you would like removed from that list, I would like to know that. And if not, if you could confirm the list, that would help move us forward. Thank you. Okay, so we'll need board action on the list Madam also. Chair. 
Yes, uh, uh, Councilman Miranda. Just speaking to what Ms. Bonaventura said on, uh, on those eight items, item number eight, uh, what legal rights does Tampa Bay Water Board have in the interlocal agreement regarding reclaimed water in light of the exclusive rights that member governments have in section 3.09 to develop, own, and or operate all facilities for reclaimed water? And regarding the motion that was made on $5,000, I understand some of that, but what I understand, if in other words, you're going to work on one day, and some of the rates that some of these attorney charge comparable to what they know, let's say it's four or $500 an hour, I guess that's what rates are for individual attorneys that know what's going on. Every day they'd be sending you a memo. And the paperwork that is gonna create, you either have faith in who you have and re representing us, the board, or you don't have faith in representing the board. And I have, we have differences. I have differences with myself sometimes. I said, what I, did I vote that way after I'd cast a vote? And I can also tell you that I have no difference with uh, the, the board that represent of C and B. And I told Mr. Khan that B should be before C because that's the way it is alphabetically. That's how simple I am. If you're doing a job for all of us, not me, not Pine Alice, not Pasco, not Newport Ritchie, not St. Petersburg, and I'm sorry if I missed one, then I'm comfortable. And I'm comfortable. Thank you. Question. Any other, uh, Commissioner Eggers? Yeah, what uh, what uh, amount uh, would you be comfortable in moving from one meeting to the next? I've never hired. I'm not asking. I'm oh. sorry. I'm asking the oh, attorney. I'm sorry. Sorry I about apologize. that, Council Member. Excuse me, Commissioner. No, no, my. You're asking uh, her. Yes. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Wasn't sure. Um, thank you, Commissioner. Um, I would estimate perhaps ten thousand dollars would um, carry us. Through this process, um, I will tell you that at this point, it's not my expectation that much has been spent. I've had one meeting with the attorneys last month, and in conversations with um, Mr. Nickerson, it was my understanding that he was going to wait until this afternoon to, to meet with the attorneys before diving into materials. He did not want to come to today's meeting with um, you know, any final decisions formed. Um, so. Perhaps ten thousand dollars. We would see if we could get it done. Um, you know, between now between and now meeting. and the next meeting. August. So if you came back at that point, you might have to ask for it more. But I would see this being more front end loaded than probably. Down yes. The road. So, so ten thousand between now and August. Yes, and more, it, you'd be more comfortable with that number. I would be more comfortable with that number. I would also remind the board that any time that my partner and I spend on this is part of our right. you know, standard retainer. There is no extra expense to the board for our time on this. That doesn't reflect necessarily how much time you actually spent on, on this <laughs> subject matter over the last year or two, but thank you for, for making that comment. I would make a friendly um, uh, amendment to, to increase the 5,000 to 10,000 uh, for the next uh, 60 days. Second. Uh, and then redress it at the August meeting. Accepted. Okay. Um, so. We have now an amendment to the main motion uh, to increase the amount from 5,000 to 10,000 up to our next board meeting in August. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we'll take up the amend amendment first. Um, a question. Is there a question? Yes, Commissioner Smith. So what's before us now is a, a $10,000 cap between now and our August meeting without anything about um, how it's going to move forward. Is that correct? Or, or is this a $10,000 every uh, section or, or something? We'll, we'll decide again in August? Is that right? Yeah, I think what Ms. Ventura said was uh, she anticipated this to be front loaded. This right. was not going to be a long process. Is that, do you want to? Yes, you are correct, Madam Chair. Okay. And that um, she doesn't anticipate this to be an on ongoing Type no, it would be my intention to cap. move okay. this forward. Thank you. And then the Mr. Dunbar is still free to do the other work of Tampa Bay Water. Yes, Mr. Um, Dunbar's firm um, has two different contracts with the agency. Um, in both cases, you know, he does report um, to to myself, to the mm -hmm. general counsel, as well as to the board. Um, he has a lobbying contract with the agency through his firm. 
um, and that is a, a separate payment matter that is handled separately um, from his work that he bills hourly, such as for the work that he um, will be doing on this. Okay. But he reports to you, you report to us. How does he report to Mr. Jordan? Um, well, the general manager and the general counsel report separately to the board. We do work in conjunction with each other. But you do? We, yes. Okay. We work but very they closely do together. report separately still? Yes, that's oh, correct. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Very good. Any other questions on the amendment? Okay. Um, all in favor of the amendment? Say yes. Aye. 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 In favor, say aye. Like sign no for $10,000. All in favor, say no. Like sign. Okay, to show it, that it passed the amendment. We're now on the main motion as amended. Is there any further questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Show that passed. Okay. Um, before we move on to item H three, Madam Chair, if I could get some direction from the board as to oh, yes, the list of eight items, yes. we now need a motion on the um, interlocal agreement issues for consideration. Um, Councilwoman Rice, thank you. So this is the voting on the eight questions. Yes. Okay. Um, yes, I will be uh, voting in support of that. I just wanted to. Um, make sure that um, um, there was some concerns expressed by me and I believe a few other board members, that there's also the question of not how we do this, but should we do this, that should we do this has been referred to as a board policy discussion. So even though it doesn't seem like there's an exact um, place for that question on this list, it's still an overriding question for us as a board um, this you know my 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 challenge with these questions is we're kind of rushing right in to perhaps ask mr. Nickerson well how do we do this project uh, for me at least I think this board still needs to spend more time discussing whether we should do it but I'm looking forward to our discussion um, um, later this afternoon to perhaps get a stronger foundation for having that policy discussion Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Eggers. And the only, and I, I, I agree with those comments, uh, whether we should do it or not, that conversation. And, and, and I think uh, as importantly is that uh, as we look at this subject matter, um, how we should handle it as an organization, yes. because we all know that the reclaimed waters belong to each of the member governments as, as to how they're converted into water and produced and consumed is an issue that's here before us. And I think that's something that perhaps it is a bigger conversation about the interlocal agreement that should be looked at in a proactive, constructive way instead of reacting to a project that came along. And so, I, you know, again, I think this has been looked at what, 10, 10 years ago, 12 years ago in, in, a, in a little different light. And here we are again today, or not today, but to discuss it. So I just think that's really important that we kind of take a look at this, this subject matter because I don't think it's going away. I think the, st the state is very supportive of potable reuse. And I think we as an organization should take it under our umbrella to look at it as it relates to water production and how it fits into the Tampa Bay water uh, framework. That is extremely important to me if this organization is going to continue to be strong for the next 20 years. Thank you. Mr. Smith. What eight questions? Oh, they're attached to H2 in your H2. board book. H2, H3. H2. Well, there's, it, there's more than eight questions there? No. Just one page. Here, I'll pass them down to you. We've got an answer here. Yes. There they are, right here. Oh, Thank you. I mean, I've got this. Um, do you have questions? You just need the questions. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to, I'm just going to make this statement. Um, well, let's dispose of this. Um, so we do. Who, who made the motion on the eight questions? Somebody make the motion. 
Somebody going to make a motion on the, to approve the eight questions for that? So moved. Okay, we have a motion second. to approve and two seconds. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Sign the pose. Show that pass. Um, here's my, um, I've been on this board for eight and a half years, and um, very rarely has this board disagreed on much. Um, the only big thing we disagreed on was, I think, the rates going up, and I was a steadfast opponent to uh, increasing the, the rates, um, the provider, the um, rate payer rates. Um, I am going to just make, I think that once we get the answers to these questions, um, and these have to do with legal rights, and you've brought that up, Commissioner Eggers, several times. Um, I think we're going to have to uh, hire a consultant um, because there is clear disagreement on this board, um, clear disagreement on the moving forward with uh, reclaim, potable reuse, whatever you want to call it. And I do think we're going to have to look at hiring a consultant or, or someone that can, a facilitator that can help facilitate a very um, open, robust discussion um, about this so that we can get to a, a really good point where we either agree to disagree or disagree to agree, um, whatever it is. But I do think it's going to be important for us. Um, to have a independent facilitator help facilitate the discussion and not put staff in the middle of it. Um, I think it's up to us. We're the decision makers on this board. So I don't know how y'all feel about it, but um, I think we've got a couple, two to four months to really think through that, but I do think it's important for us to do that. Yes. Um, Thank you, Chairwoman. I think that's a really uh, intriguing idea. One thing that I would really insist upon is that this consult, the purpose of the consultant isn't to let this get away from the board, that these discussions and decisions have to be kept front and center in front of the board and not delegated to some subcommittee. And I think one of our challenges is is we've got utility directors meeting here, we've got our attorneys meeting there, and j talking about really important issues, and then you know, all of a sudden you know, things come back to us in the form of a final recommendation. We only meet once every couple of months. The, the board needs to be involved in what's happening. Not only involved, we need to be setting the direction. So I, I'd only support a consultant to facilitate this pro process, if it's a consultant facilitating the board and working with the board to keep these issues in front of us. Oh, yeah. Not a subcommittee. Yeah, that's definitely. Commissioner Eggers. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the comments about open and transparency, um, well, I guess is what I've always hoped for. Um, and I've always hoped that the conversations uh, would take place so that you know, for crying out loud, we're, we're in this thing together. We, again, not, not being afraid of differences. I mean, and talking about, we've kind of gone down the legal path about what, does an MOU fit or not fit with us today? Should it be the interlocal agreement being looked at instead of that? Uh, where is the future of, of reclaimed water uh, in the state as far as, far as potable reuse goes? And, um, and what should Tampa Bay's waters Role be, and I think these are all huge questions. But we need to be in the same boat rowing. And I agree with your comment. If we, in your comment, uh, Councilwoman, uh, if we are working on this together, I think we can get uh, overcome some of this stuff. But you know, I, I frankly, um, you know, have been unfortunately reacting to what I think is not that part, not that open and transparent process. And frankly, I don't like it. I, I'd, I'd rather just be up here having constructive dialogue. In, in, in consultation with this consultant as opposed to hearing about things going on um, a, 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 away from away from this center stage, so to speak. So um, this is a big deal. And there is a bigger regional water issue that's also mixing into this stuff that I'm glad we're having that conversation in August. 
There was an MOU that was just arbitrarily pulled from a meeting last time that is pulled because there's going to, there's going to be a, a Hillsborough County meeting in, I think, next week or something uh, on the few, you know, your, your reclaimed mm -hmm. use and all of that stuff. So, um, so to that point, I mean, we don't have to approve D3, 4, 5, and 6. We can obviously just pull things if we want to. My point is we need to be in this thing together and mean it and, and, and honestly think that the future of Tampa Bay water is the future that has been here for 20 years. And, and, uh, and if we don't, then say that. And don't get, don't get behind the different committees and, and don't get behind a consultant. Uh, this is an extremely valuable regional system that has worked for so long and so well, uh, despite some problems along the way. So I agree to your point on policy. I agree to your point on a consultant enabling us to be a stronger organization with better communication and transparency. So I'm all for it, um, and I don't want them, that consultant meeting with any special group but us. So thank you for letting me rant a little bit. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Um, it's just, it was an idea that I think, um, it, it's just our region is a special region because it's so diverse, and now each county really is becoming very diverse in its own different ways. And I think that's where we have to figure out how we can come together and respect and recognize those differences um, with the different counties and how we can make it work here in Tampa Bay Water. And just one other thing, if, if that consultant could bring to the table for discussion, because frankly, I'm not sure what each of the members do with their reclaimed system. I mean, it would be informative for me. I think demand management is a big part of this equation that you bring up over and over. And yet, when you have a system, our water systems that need upgrading and you need uh, multiple different uses, or you, you don't need, you have multiple different uses of reclaimed water that are out there. And we may use it a percentage of it for this, and you all may have a smaller percentage of use. I think those are important information. Not that I control your reclaimed or you control ours, but just to understand where you all are going and where we're, where we're going with it. Because I do think that comes into play as we discuss our role as a water production organization. So that would be nice to know that kind of information. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Oakley. I agree with uh, their comments I made on this. Uh, Tampa Bay Water is in charge of our potable water. I I understand that reclaimed water belongs to each member of government, and I, I don't mind however they use it, as long as they don't make it into potable water and take charge of it over Tampa Bay water, I think. They need to be over, over all potable water. So you change it from reclaimed water, if you got reclaimed water and you're, you're watering in different neighborhoods and things of this nature of that reuse, I think that's good. But once you change it from a reclaimed water product to a potable water product, Tampa Bay Water is our wholesaler, and I tend to think they should be in charge of that at that point in time. Whether that go to a certain member of government or not, that's something the interlocal agreement needs to be able to air, and I think the consultant is a and, good person to go through with. Right, so. and that, of course, is one of the eight questions, too, is the legal rights to the reclaim or versus right. after it has been potable water. So, um, okay, very good. Good discussion. Madam um, Chair, I'm sorry, sorry. Mr. Mayor Marlow. Uh, uh, Mr. Miranda had actually raised his hand before I did. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank, thank you, Mayor. You know, I, I agree with some of what was said. I don't agree with everything was said. Um, I, I'm, you know, feel like way back I, I said it before that reclaimed water was not the propriety of any agency, including this one, and that belonged to the individuals who produced it. Uh, and when you look at countries that are using it all over the globe, and when you look at Atlanta, when you look at the Atacuan Valley, when you look at California, when you look at different areas, different cities in the country, they're using reclaimed water for drinking water. So then what benefit does anyone have? You're the owner of the water, and you can't use it, if that's what I heard correctly, only for reclaim. So you're gonna waste water. I'm an environmentalist at heart. I have no grass, and just because of this, I'm going to bring my electric and my water bill every month here to compare. 
I don't water anything outside. I have healthy rocks. I got plants that grow very nicely around the rocks. You know, it doesn't look that bad at all. So I have a small three-bedroom, two-bath house with three individuals. And I think we have to set a standard, not just speak about the standard. I believe in electric cars, and more likely in the next month I'm going to own one. That way, when the environmentalists come to see me, I can ask them, show me your electric bill, show me your water bill, let me see what you're driving. And then we can talk. I don't say something and do something else. I do what I say, and I say what I do. I'm not opposed to anybody looking at reclaimed water, but when you use reclaimed water for solely irrigation, to me, that's just, just to me, that's just a wasted asset. And I'm not talking about any individuals or any government. When you look at technology, what are you going to do, sit home and say it doesn't exist? I'm wrong if I was to say that. When you look at the amount of energy you got to do to clean salt water, to make it potable water, and the amount of electricity you got to use, I'm not opposed to that. You got to have a life support and something to back you up in case that life support kind of misfunctions during the life of the cycle. However, when you start the capping attorneys, once you start capping doctors, in the middle of a heart surgery, and they say, I'm sorry, my $10,000 is up. <laughs> so what are we doing? I'm not pro or con against anything. But don't get parochial. Don't hold it to yourself. You know, we've come a long way, and we still got a ways to go. But this, if I'm here, because I already told the mayor, this is a mayoral position, not mine. If I'm here, no contract could have two endings. In 2038, it ends. Mm -hmm. But it really doesn't end. Because in 2038, if you have debt, it never ends. Wow. It's like being divorced and nobody dies. You keep paying the alimony. That's nice. And it depends if you're the receiver or the giver. Everything in life has a cycle. I look at the audience now and myself. I don't expect to be here in 10 years. I don't mean in this seat, I mean above the gravel in 10 years. <coughs> but all of us have that. We have all, all of us come with an expiration date, not just what you buy in the store. So you better start thinking about life, not worry about who has it, who doesn't have it, who wants it, who gets it. I never got sped. I come from the hood. And I don't mind telling anybody, it was the best place to live. I had solar hot water heater. And we're talking about now solar like it's a new thing. We had it in the housing projects back in the 50s. Electric cars were invented yesterday. We were invented 100 years ago. Now it's a new thing. Isn't that wonderful? So what I'm saying is you get along by understanding what you're doing and stop pointing fingers. I don't want no baseball team. I've never voted for a stadium and never will. In fact, people ask me, how come you got elected? I said, I really don't know. <laughs> I really don't. Because what I'm telling you is what I tell them. Let them make their own money. If I don't get reelected, they get elected again. And the time comes with an expiration date. We just don't know in the humans where it's stamped at. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Madam Chair, the, I, I think the, the discussion that we've been having for the last pushing two years now uh, regarding both TAP and uh, SHARP is, is important, but it's important in a much larger framework than whether or not uh, we ultimately give our blessing to the Tampa Augmentation Project or anything else. Uh, and, and like Councilman Miranda, I, you know, I, I don't know how long I've got on this earth as well. I've outlived my father. I consider every day that I wake up uh, to be a gift from God. The, the thing is, it, at some point, this region is going to have to deal with additional water supplies that we are not currently have any way of getting. Uh, An and obvious uh, way of 
dealing with that is to look at reclaimed water, like much like uh, Israel and any number of cities in the United States already do. Uh, if, if that means that we need to sit down and have a broad-ranging discussion, as you're suggesting, with a moderator that says, okay, you guys now, let's figure out what are we going to do. And it's, it's not just next year. It's not five years from now when the TAP program is, is underway. It's not 10 years, 20, 30 even. It may be 50 years. But this is going to be an issue. We, we came together as six governments back almost 20 years ago now to put this organization together. It's, it's worked very well during that 20-year period. It, it probably wouldn't hurt to revisit, you know, okay, yeah, 20 years ago, the, the folks that were here said, let's, let's leave reclaimed water out of this discussion. Maybe we need to talk about it. I, I know that we have reclaimed water in, in Newport Ritchie that we're not using internally. Uh, where does that go? I don't know about St. Pete or, uh, or Pinellas, you know, what, what they have in the way of, of reclaimed water that they're having to try to figure out something to do with. But yeah, maybe we ought to be sitting down and talking about it so that, that I can learn from uh, Commissioner Eggers, you know, what, what they're doing and, and vice versa. Uh, and, and if some of that ultimately results in creative ways for us to take the reclaimed water that otherwise we only pour on, uh, on grass, uh, maybe that's a good thing. And so I look forward to having this, uh, this discussion. I think it would make a very good workshop for this body to sit at and, and have somebody from the outside helping us work our way through those decisions so that, that all of us can come to some consensus on, okay, what do we do going forward? And if, if that means we have to ultimately make changes in the interlocal, so be it. Uh, if it doesn't mean we have to make changes in the interlocal agreement, I'm cool with that too. So. Um, it's been an interesting two years on the board. Uh, okay, so I, I thought that Mr. Nickerson was coming to, to speak to us and was going to talk to us about those eight questions. So I think I'm, they have to meet, the attorneys have to meet as a group with him, and then he'll come back to us. Why, why can't he talk to us? I, I, maybe I just must have misunderstood that, but I thought he was going to go over um, the intent and the history and some of that with us. Well, he is here today if you would like to hear from him. Um, that was a request from the executive committee that we have him here today, and Mr. Nickerson is in fact here. Um, as far as a substantive discussion of these issues, we certainly can schedule that for um, another day. Unfortunately, we were not able to get everyone together, the attorneys together, until this afternoon. And um, it was Mr. Nickerson's desire our desire, and I believe even the board's desire, that he come to this with an open mind. And so for that reason, he did not come here this morning with any firm opinions formed. But if you would like him to come to the podium so you could express any concerns you have um, to him directly, you may do that. We also anticipate that you know we will have a more substantive discussion of this um, at a later date. So I also am working on keeping a very open mind and I, re I respect what um, Commissioner Egger said, that it would be good for everyone to hear what the counties and cities are doing with their reclaimed water. And I understand Pinellas and maybe St. Pete as well doesn't have the robust reclaimed water program that the newer developing counties have and maybe don't um, you see it in the same fashion. Um, so I think that would be really important really good for everyone to hear what the counties are doing with their reclaimed water. Um, and yeah, I think I would, I am very interested in hearing Ms. Mr. Nickerson's um, input on the intent when they set up Tampa Bay Water on what was to be um, included as far as new water sources. I mean, did they purposely exclude reclaimed water? Was it not around then or? I would very much like to hear his opinion. 
So actually, I know what was going on when there was a war, <laughs> called water wars. Um, okay, so how I think though we need to, uh, we need to finish our agenda, and and we've got a short two hour window now to finish our agenda so that they can get to this attorney's meeting. I'm not um, saying that I. I do want him to come before us, but I wouldn't, preferably from my standpoint, I think he'd be better if he had the discussion with our county attorneys before he talks to us so he understands the legal nature of where each of the different member governments are coming from. Does that make sense? I, yeah, it does. Can I just ask one, just yes. throw this in, we don't have to answer it today, but uh, this executive committee meeting is relatively new from what I understand. Is there any reason, and I, I'm going to duck as I ask this question, that we couldn't go to monthly meetings instead of just having a off executive meeting where, quite frankly, some of us have all been at those off executive meetings uh, at least for a while? I mean, we have a lot of things that we're dealing with, and if it means an abbreviated, that meeting in between is abbreviated and we're dealing with maybe a, a more focused uh, mm -hmm. agenda, so be it. I mean, I think it's really, there's some really critical things going on here. Maybe it would be valuable to, you know, to kind of get back together for the next few months uh, on a monthly basis. So just, again, don't have to answer that now, but just for, um, for I We used to meet monthly way back. Um, and then I, I think just the recession and there wasn't much building going on. I mean, I think we just went to every yeah. other month. And then I brought up to have the executive committee because I felt like there needs to be eyes on what's going on every single month, some eyes, uh, the leadership um, of the board. Um, if I mean, we're here, the uh, Eggers, I, and Rice, and Starkey are here every month. Um, if you all want to join in and make it a, an official board meeting every single month, um, I'm not opposed to it, uh, but let's, um, yes? Uh, yeah. <coughs> you want your microphone? Oh, sorry. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, and uh, it's my understanding before I was with Tab Baywater, the board did meet every month, and at some point it was changed to, as, as Commissioner Mer as Chairman Merman uh, just stated, and when I first came uh, discussing with the board, there was uh, discussion about they wanted the, the board to be more involved in some of these discussions at a committee type level. And uh, I did offer up the suggestion of an executive committee, which started, the board did agree to that, and, it's, and they decided to meet on those days that other, used to be the odd month board meeting. And so we have been having those, I think it started probably in 2013, not long after I came, or early 14. And and, what, and and certainly we are very open to any other meetings or discussions or committees or anything else the board wants to do because we certainly want to make sure that we're meeting your needs. So we're certainly very receptive to that. I just wanted to offer that little bit of a history of that. I, oh, so let's do this. Um, for purposes of finishing this agenda so that the 130 meeting stays on schedule uh, for the attorneys and um, the guest speaker <laughs> and um, it can start at 130. Let's, um, I, I think what we'll do is we'll just do some poll with the board members and find out how they feel about just going to monthly board meetings, if that's okay. Um, and then we'll announce it at our August meeting or at the executive meeting. <laughs> One way or the other, we'll, we'll announce it after we do this poll among the members. And I, and I think it's just a, we don't have to do this forever <laughs> or for three years, but I just think we're at such a critical time right now that um, it just seems like we, we've said several times today, well, you know, we don't meet for two more months. Um, and thank you. There's going to be there's going to be meetings in the next two weeks that might have relevance to conversation that we should be aware of. And again, just just a thought. But um, I'm not sure why the poll. I think we could, you know, discuss it at the next well, meeting. Well, I think some members may have to go back and look at their schedules to well, make I mean, sure could, they can comply listen, with every just, month. We could bring it to a vote next meeting if you yeah, want. Yeah, I think Instead we should. Poll, do we have to do it in sunshine? I'd rather do it in the sunshine. Oh, yes. 
yeah, everything meeting, we in, do. In, in August, I'd rather have it as a meeting. Okay. As a, on, on this decision. So no poll. No, no, we'll, we'll, just, poll. I don't we'll want take this up in August. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I think that the purpose of the poll is to let each board member express their opinions about if they want to do it, they have to go back, look at their schedules, see if they can come here every Monday. <laughs> And that's, um, but let's bring it to a vote in August instead of polling. We can bring it. We can go back and look I at was, our, Okay. What I mean, I think you're taking it one step too far. I don't think you need to do that. If everybody, if everybody agrees, we're going to go monthly. We'll just announce it. I don't think we need to vote if everybody is in agreement. Madam, Madam Chairman, I've got no objection. I support it. Support it too. I have to look at my calendar, but I'll, I will let you know right now I will not be here in August. I will be on a boat in the middle of a bunch of water. <laughs> very, very far a away. different kind of water. But Woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it, it, if I may, it seems like what we've really had a lot to, to needed a lot of time for over the last several meetings and reasons why I have come to the executive committee meeting here and there is um, to discussing the TAP. But now that that has been postponed and we have uh, a little breathing room, um, I'm not sure that, that uh, the system is, is broken as it is. That's just, um, I haven't, I'm not seeing a lot more meaty items aside from the TAP issues. Right. Well, the consultant will be bringing forward that we talked about today, significant policy conversation. That's the idea of that consultant that I think will be, it's, it'll be effectively running parallel to the work that TAP's doing in the next year. So I think it, okay. we could find ourselves for a while having okay. a lot of conversations. So, so here's how we're gonna do it. Board members are gonna go back, you're gonna look at your calendars, make sure, I know several of us can say right now, yes, we can do it, others can't. So you're going to let Mr. Jordan know if you can do a monthly board meeting. And then we will report that back of who can do monthly, who cannot do monthly. And at that point, you'll know where it stands, okay? And that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna continue with the agenda right now because we need to keep going, okay? Um, just one venture. <sighs> Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, that takes us to item H3. Um, members of the board, item H3 is a follow-up to board action at the April meeting to offer to co-fund the city's TAP studies up to $1.6 million if state and SWIFT MUD co-funding is not received. Tampa did not receive state or SWIFT MUD funding in this current cycle. I'd like to work off the June 10th supplemental memo that was distributed for this item, and copies of that should be at your seat if you do not otherwise have them. There are two attachments to that memo. Attachment A is a draft co-funding agreement distributed and reviewed by the executive committee last month. This draft is based on my understanding of board action in April, and I'll identify the significant, significant terms for you. Section two describes the work that is reimbursable and excludes work associated with recovery wells. Section three provides that the co-funding is on a 50% reimbursement basis for work performed through June 2020, and there is an offset for other funding Tampa may receive during the term of the agreement. Section four provides that the agreement will remain in effect through September of 2020 to allow time for invoices to be received and reimbursed, and the remaining sections are similar to other co-funding agreements and contain fairly standard records and audit terms. Attachment B, is an alternative draft with proposed revisions provided by the city of Tampa. There are three major differences between the two versions that I'd like to highlight for you. The first major difference is a timing of the work that, that is reimbursable through June of 2020 in attachment A or through June of 2021 in attachment B. I'm told the difference in timing or the, the change to June of 2021 is to align the reimbursable work with the Swift Mud co-funding cycle. The second primary difference is that attachment A excludes reimbursement for work associated with the recovery wells and attachment B does not. The third difference relates to the records and audit provisions in the agreement. 
Attachment B limits the timing of an audit requested by Tampa Bay Water to only 30 days after receipt of Tampa's last invoice. It limits the scope of an audit to only financial records rather than all project records, and it requires Tampa Bay Water to dispute costs within 30 days of receipt of an invoice. Lastly, it limits Tampa's obligation to provide reports to Tampa Bay Water to only final reports and only those resulting from the reimbursable work. So those are the primary differences for your consideration. Tampa's requested revisions are presented here for your um, discussion and direction to me so we can um, finalize the agreement. Okay, so you need to get approval on the agreement today. You need board action. That would be my, my desire, yes, okay, so that we can move good. this forward. Okay, Councilwoman Rice. Thank you. So I was the one that made the motion for giving the city of Tampa the money they needed and the time to do a feasibility um, study, taking into consideration uh, what they had applied to Swift Mud for. The, the Tampa Bay Water original version dated May 8th, 2019. That original version, not the red line version, the original version reflects what the board directed and approved. The purpose was to delay the decision until feasibility studies were completed. That dollar amount reflects what Tampa requested to the of the legislature. The appropriation request confirmed that the work must be done by May of 2020. This was what you submitted to um, the legislature. The Tampa Bay Water proposal the original proposal, we, it uses the original Swift Mud co-funding language and requirements. So now the city of Tampa seems to come back with changing reporting requirements that aren't even consistent with what they would have had to live up to with an agreement with Swift Mud. This, what Tampa's come back with today, oh, and by the way, uh, we had an executive committee meeting recently. This was not presented at that point in time. There's another red line version showing up on the dais before the board. I realize that when I made that motion at our last meeting, it kind of caught people off guard. We took a break for 10 or 15 minutes while various sides discussed what this meant before Member governments were comfortable coming back with the vote, but we did come back, we did have those discussions, we did vote, and nowhere at that time was it ever mentioned that the city of Tampa would need another year to drag this out. You know, we gave you an inch and you're taking a mile. Mm. You have provided absolutely no uh, rationale for why you need more time for this. And it's in part the reason why I made a motion earlier to cap the amount that outside attorneys spend on this project because if this, if the, uh, if this uh, change were to prevail to stretch this out another year, well then how much more staff time, how much more attorney fees do we pay without accountability or without staff direction? So I move uh, to approve the draft dated, the original draft dated May 8th, 2019. It's the only draft that reflects what our board directed and approved. I'll second. second. Madam Chair. Um, thank you. Um, we do have a motion and a second. Yes, May I ask somebody from the city of yes. Tampa staff to come, Ms. I Petain, think that would you, uh, be appropriate at this time to uh, explain why the date was changed or why you need more time, not that was changed. Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Chair and members of the board. Uh, Jan McLean, Assistant City Attorney for the record. Um, let me address a couple of the issues that was raised by Councilwoman uh, Rice. Um, first, uh, the reason that you did not have a revised proposal in front of the executive committee was that the city was advised that um, a member had requested that there be no discussions or negotiations between Tampa Bay Water and the city of Tampa regarding the agreement prior to the executive committee. 
So um, I had raised um, verbally with our gen with your general counsel that there would be a couple of issues, um, but we had been advised that no discussion would be had prior to this board meeting. So subsequently afterward, um, Ms. Buenaventura contacted me and she and I and Mr. Khan had a couple of conversations with regard to these issues. And I submitted this revised version for consideration by the board today. So we thought we were following what at least one member had requested for the board to consider today, um, including the revised dates. Um, the motion, when it was made by yourself and um, approved by the board, was to provide the city with $1.6 million, which would be, <clears throat> excuse me, in um, substitution for whatever monies we may or may not get from the state or from the Southwest Florida Water Management District. These are not feasibility studies. What we had applied for from the Water Management District, and I have a copy of the application here, which I believe um, we shared with uh, Tampa Bay Water, was for the 60% design, which would be the next phase of the project. What we are working on right now is a 30% design, which included some analysis to continue forward with the project. Um, the timing of the um, request is also to mirror the Southwest Florida Water Management District's timing, which um, you'll find that next week, I believe that they're meeting here and they're going to consider final approval of projects for the FY19 um, a, a cooperative funding agreement, is that uh, they take into consideration um, projects are submitted in July of the year uh, pre previous to the next year. So we have our application still um, in consideration at Swift Mud, albeit that it is uh, number 54 out of 56. It's a low um, uh, consideration. So if we were to have been approved, then we would enter into a cooperative funding agreement and then the monies would be available beginning after that is executed, which would be approximately between October and December of this year. We could not begin work on, those, on that phase, and part of the agreement would be a scope and a project schedule, which would follow through the 60% design phase. It was never intended that we would be able to um, do the work for the 3.2 million between now and June of 2020. What we were coming back to the board in June of 2020 was with the results of the 30% design and the analysis and feasibility that we had been doing over the course and up to that time. So it's, it's not a, a dragging out, it's just following in the normal course of events as far as what the city would be um, doing. Um, with regard to the three, um, the three major items that, um, and I'm just going to follow through with regard to the issues that were raised, um, with regard to the three major differences, um, it does include design of the recovery wells. Um, I have looked at the minutes of um, the meeting, and there was no indication of restriction for um, the recovery wells not to be included for design. Um, I don't even see that there was a restriction with regard to construction, but we are saying that in this particular phase of the project, it would be the 60%, which would include any design features of the recovery wells. Um, and what we did, and um, Ms. Buenaventura and I had this conversation with regard to reporting, uh, the Tampa Bay Water <coughs> proposed um, language that seemed broader than what was in the context of the Southwest Florida Water Management Agreement. And so the proposal was to refine um, any kind of audit to financials and to establish a timeline there under, similar to the context of what we would be doing with the Southwest Florida Water Management District. So there's no intention of the city to um, drag this out. We were just 
mirroring what we would be doing with a district. Okay, Councilman Miranda, do you have any no, follow-up? I'm, I'm just waiting for the vote. Uh, there's a motion, I think, in about four seconds uh, to that motion, so I'm just waiting for the vote to be cast. Um, Mayor Marlow. Yeah, I, uh, in, in regards to the modified uh, proposal that was, <laughs> was put out, I'm, I'm not sure that I care about the June 2021 uh, recognizing that that would probably require us to change some other things that we have previously agreed to if, if we were to do that. And I, I'm sort of ambivalent about the whole, whole well part, the second piece of that. Uh, but I've got a real problem with the Tampa's proposal regarding the audit, I think. Uh, that, that, that is a, a no-go for me, period. I, we would be uh, negligent in our fiduciary responsibility to the, the ratepayers region-wide if we didn't require uh, full audit protection. And for that reason, uh, I'm, I'm going to support the, uh, the motion that's on the table. Uh, or on the on the floor, uh, as approved by the executive committee. I think that is the the better approach. I, I'm just not buying the the Tampa alternate proposal. Okay, Jean, do you have an answer to? Well, just to clarify, we are not asking that there is an uh, an ability for Tampa Bay Water not to request a financial audit. We included that in there. It was the determination. It was the definition of audit. And it, it was it was the scope and and the the time frames that that I'm very concerned with. Okay, the, the scope would be a financial audit, not a performance audit or cost benefit. I, I think we have a responsibility to do both. That's my personal opinion. Madam okay. Chair, I, yes, I also sure, had an issue that the scientific information wasn't going to be shared. Yeah. So that's that's a big issue for me. What is that? I'm sorry. What did you say? They, the, they, scientific the scientific information. The, you know the the, the results. The results. The, the scientific information that they was not going to be shared with us. Okay. Thank you. No, that, that that's if I may. Um, it, it, there was no intention not to share it. There was just a, an intention not to share every draft with uh, with Tampa Bay Water. We would be working. What it says in here is that we would be providing upon Tampa Bay Water's request of all final reports. And of course, we're subject to sunshine. So if at any uh, point in time, Tampa Bay wanted to do a public records request, then we could do that as well. We were just trying to set up a workable process. It, it's not that we weren't going to share. That's not what it says. Okay. Other comments, discussion? Commissioner yeah, I'm, I'm still not uncomfortable with that. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, we're, we're if we're helping to pay, we're a team. We should be able to see whatever we want. I mean, then then we should be able to see whatever we want whenever we want. Okay, Commissioner Eggers. Yeah, and well, I mean, I certainly Councilman certainly have a rights. comments made about the audit. I hundred percent agree with limiting any any reports at all. Just, I mean, this whole subject matter should be just we should be sharing will willfully on every single thing that's going on here. Um, and this spirit of doing what we decided to do at the last meeting, certainly I hope um, gave that, that sense that, hey, okay, we're, we're, we're going to help you get through that next year of some expenses. Um, I thought that when I read this, that the, the, the cost that would be incurred through June 30th of next year was it, period. Now, if there were some reimbursement costs that kind of, fell outside that area that, but had been incurred in the first year, uh, we'd be willing to pay those against the monies, but not additional ongoing reimbursement costs. I, frankly, I'm sure that there's been the discussion about 30%, 60% design, but I've also, for me, it's always been about June of next year, maybe it was May, June of next year, uh, period. And um, the recovery wells don't bother me one way or another. It's part of the process, but I, I just think that the original the original agreement here certainly captures the the spirit of this board, which I think still again we, we have gone so far down this road, and still Councilman Miranda, your board has still not totally blessed this project, 
In fact, recently, a lot of your board members are asking a lot of questions. And so we're, we're agreeing to go down this path. The, the, your residents haven't been asked about this process. And we're, we've done a little work here at Tampa Bay Water that says we are embracing the, the attitude of we got to talk to our <laughs> residents about this TAP project and about uh, potable reuse today versus 20 years from today or 10 years from today as we evolve towards that uh, use. I'm not talking about what makes sense up here. I'm talking about what makes sense in here to people, our residents. So for me, I mean, we're, we're doing a lot of this just, I mean, you have a system that needs work, you have a, a, a reclaimed use that is going unused and you're trying to find a use for it. You have a council that hasn't embraced the process and we're trying to be good team players here to allow this to go on for another year. And that's what I would support. But this report stuff just reflects another little bit of animosity between okay. our staff and Tampa Bay Water, our City of Tampa staff that does not need to exist. I'm not talking about the ones that exist here. I'm talking about the meetings that you have with our staff need to be collegial. And, and, I, and I think that, that some of these comments and these changes just reflect that, not that attitude. God bless America. We're in this thing together. Start acting like it, all of us. This is just, just so frustrating. Thank you. Councilwoman Rice. Um, thank you. I, um, the intention of my motion at our last board meeting, oh, this all had to do with feasibility. And I mean, I don't know how t the city of Tampa can zoom forward on paying for design until there's feasibility studies and until this board has seen the feasibility studies. And I recognize that in the water world that this may be somewhat of a concurrent process, but I really don't think I could have been more clear and that the board voted with me on this, that we, we appropriated the funds to give Tampa in good faith an extra year to work out feasibility. And I just feel like I, I don't want to repeat myself, but I just stand by the original um, document as reflecting what the board wanted. Thank you. A response oh. from the city? I call for the question on the floor. Okay. We have a question called on the motion and the second. All in favor? What was the motion again, please, real quick? Well, the, the, you guys uh, made it. The A, right? Correct. Okay, thank you. Just a little okay. clarification. Yeah. Um, okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Like, sign, and pose. So can you read that motion again, Madam well, Chair? We have to vote on calling the question, right? I didn't calling hear the sorry. question is not debatable, as I understand. I thought it was two-thirds. I don't believe a vote is required for calling the question. No. It's like the highest order. Um, Madam sorry. Chair. Uh, I think you're taking a vote so that the city of Tampa under A, that's the one that you mean you can't get the 2021. You've got to get the 2020 subject date. Am I correct? Yes. I, I want to ease all minds, and uh, the city of Tampa would like to withdraw from further consideration of the pending TAP or memorandum of understanding and agreement. Mm -hmm. Upon completion of the 60% design, I want everybody to have a nice meal today. Uh, the city of Tampa will return at the appropriate time for further discussion. But we're pulling our memorandum of TAP and a memorandum of understanding. Does everybody understand that? No. Well, they pulled and it. I'm sorry, I can't explain it no other way. It's off the floor. I'm taking it off the agreement between City of Tampa and Tampa Bay Water. That means all board members, all of us. So we're now back to point one, zero. In other words, there is no memorandum of understanding regarding TAP far as I'm concerned, representing the city of Tampa. Okay, so the vote we just took is a moot point. There is no $1.6 million. Correct. No $1.6 million will be appropriated to uh, the city of Tampa for TAP. Well, we didn't take a vote. We've already voted to Take a vote right? on what? We just took a vote. Took a vote. You actually, I don't believe you voted on the motion. There was a, a request to I voted restate. on the motion. That may have been confused. a prior motion. I don't. There was a request to restate the motion, but I don't believe there was an actual vote on the motion just yet. 
by Councilman, Councilman Miranda. Mm -hmm. I called, <laughs> this is why I wish we had a clerk here that could restate. Um, I called for the vote and then he spoke. So I'll call for the vote again. All in favor, or, well, it's a moot point now. He's removed it, so just I think you just withdraw the motion. Because there is no appropriation. After the vote was called. I'm after the It's not a mute point. Okay. Her motion. There was be a, voted there on. is a motion, my motion on the was floor to approve the MOU for 2020 to keep it as is. Right. And there's a second uh, by Commissioner Peters. Um, if you all want to go through with that vote, that's fine. We can. And, but they are, in essence, withdrawing. Okay. Um, but we can. All in favor of the motion, okay, cool. as stated. So well, I'll right. with, withdraw it and make a motion that we um, that we stop the that we withdraw the 1.6 million offer to the city of Tampa for their feasibility and design studies, and that we kill the TAP project. I didn't say you kill the TAP project. Well, you that's got right to kill the project that, that you, don't, that you don't own. It's being deferred. What? You don't, we don't, no one owns their TAP project. No. Okay. I'm just saying that I want to make friends with everybody. I want everybody to be happy. I want everybody not to worry about the attorney costs. I want, I want everybody to be happy. But what I'm doing is taking her off the floor and let the city of Tampa worry about his own problems and we'll figure it out. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, so let's just, if, if, or did you withdraw the motion? No, I'm gonna keep it on the floor. I, I'd For like what a, reason? I, I, oh, I'm not sure what he's proposed. I, pref I, don't, I don't support Excuse deferring me. this decision I'm, I'm not, they'll explain it to you. I just said what I have to say. I don't, I don't, you know, I play ball games to nine innings. I don't go into overtime. Okay. Um, Gene, would you like to explain further? <clears throat> yes. Um, I don't need my motion explained to no, you. No, I'm not, and then that's no. what I, that's what I did. Oh, not yours. Step on your you motion. want, you're unclear. I'm, I'm clarifying. Yeah, I don't, propose. yes. He's going, she's going to clarify what he proposed. Uh, what Councilman Miranda has um, stated is that the city of Tampa is withdrawing for further consideration by the Tampa Bay Water Board, the underlying TAP MOU and agreement. Right now it's pending and we're withdrawing it from further consideration until such time as we return. You were in the, you were in the process of voting on your motion for the 1.6 million and Councilman Miranda brought up that we are withdrawing from further consideration the TAP MOU and agreement. Two separate okay. items. Okay. So we question. can either continue to vote on the motion or if you'd like to withdraw it. Either, either way, I'm fine. Does our board need to affirm version A? You mean the 2020? Yes. That's basically what your motion does. Is right. It takes uh, us back. So if you want to. Just because he with, they withdrew, I mean, should I, I just feel like given yeah. the nature of this conversation, okay. the board should be clear and take a vote affirming, affirming the version 20, A just to make it really clear. 2020. Okay. That's fine. Are y'all clear? We want, we're going to vote on the motion because that states our intention to keep it in 2020. Um, yeah. Madam Chair, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, maybe maybe it would be prudent to take a real quick five minute break. Well, not we have to dispose of this motion. Right. Otherwise, right. or we have to. I thought we just, already voted on. No, we haven't on voted a. on Mrs. Well, Rice's motion. As we, as I was about to say, all in My favor fault. say aye. He started talking. So, uh, what did I vote on? Because now I'm not clear what I voted on. What was the last vote on? It's, it's what we're talking about right now. But we're we voted. Voting on it. You voted for it, and we re re voting now on the same motion. Why are Why are we okay. redoing the same because motion? Because it was interrupted during the vote. Yeah, it was my fault. I apologize. For no, we voted, and then you spoke. 
is and my that's recollection. What I, I really thought we did. We voted. I definitely voted. I didn't hear a I no. Called, I called, I called for, for the, the eyes, vote, and I voted. And then he started yep. talking. Yes, I didn't. It was a vote. Say uh, who would it, want to vote no? Correct. And then say motion pass. I it was not under discussion. His right, comment came after the vote, so I don't know what but parliamentary. But I didn't get to procedure. say who. All in favor say I like sign opposed. I didn't say like sign opposed. Well, when you say when you call for the motion, you can say yay or nay. So call for your vote. Okay. There were no, I didn't hear any. The motion no's. passed, Madam Chair. Just for clarity, <laughs> I and I, don't, I want the record to be clean. If I in any way interrupted you with the board members, I apologize to each and every one of you and to all the constituents you represent. But I would just to have the record cleared. I would like to be, have the opportunity to revote on Mrs. Rice's motion. I think it'd be better off for the lifestyle of this community. And that's it's not that's clear. Not it really is not completely a hundred percent clear. So let's just have a revote on the original motion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Aye. And that was Councilman Miranda. Right. Uh, voted no. And. Okay, so show the motion passed okay. as presented. And we are going to take a short lunch break. <laughs> oh, we're going to have a working lunch. Um, so if you can come back in about 10 minutes so we can finish the agenda.
Okay. We're going to resume and pick up where we left off. A um, couple orders of business here. I am going to call on our, uh, our attorney to make a statement and then Councilman Miranda to clarify um, some statements he made. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, in light of the decision that was just made um, or the statement that was made by Councilman Miranda to withdraw from further consideration by Tampa Bay Water, the TAP agreement and MOU, I want to inquire of the board whether um, you still want the attorneys to proceed with the analysis that you requested. As I review the list of the eight issues that you did approve for analysis by the attorneys, um, in my judgment, um, at least seven of those <laughs> are um, directly related to the agreement and MOU. And um, so I just want clarification from the board so we do not proceed um, in a way that is not what is uh, in alignment with your thinking. Okay, uh, good questions. Um, I was kind of thinking that after you mentioned it to me when we took our break, I think the questions are still good, um, not as they relate just to the Tampa MOU, but to a county's reclaim project. Um, some of those questions still apply because I think almost everybody's working on something with reclaim um, in their uh, member government. So I don't know if we want to reword where it says Tampa MOU and just do... Um, a county's reclaim water project. Um, but I'll let uh, you guys can discuss it. Mr. Smith. Yes, I think we still have the questions um, about uh, how member governments can use reclaim water, right? Um, and some of this would apply to that, but. Um, uh, Maybe it it would be good to rework these questions and come back to the board at a future date. Uh, but certainly, we should uh, we don't need to be spending the ten thousand dollars to do these exact questions for the Tampa MOU. Uh huh. Um, it would just be um, basically. I th I think there's a lot of concern on this board around reclaim water and how we deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, so, do you want to still meet this afternoon and discuss how these questions could be relevant to our conversations or? Uh, uh, well, can I? Mm -hmm. um, there were some comments that were made that kind of surrounded these questions a little bit regarding policy and the role of the MOU versus the interlocal agreement mm -hmm. and, and that kind. And then, of course, the question. And opinions of, of about reclaim, which I think we're all pretty much in line with the fact that there are each of our individual assets. We're not. I don't think we're arguing that. It's just where do, you know. It's what we do with that uh, as it relates to water production and 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 how that fits into the temp. Because I think going forward, again, I think we want to make sure that we're kind of working again, trying to get in the same rowboat. Forget rowing it the same direction. We want to get in the same rowboat, and I. I think it would be great uh, while they're all together to have some of this discussion that they could touch on some of this broader. Uh, it's really policy for us, but I just I think while we while we have the folks together, especially some of the folks that originated the agreement, just to get their thoughts on it uh, as it relates to this, I think it all kind of is interrelated. So I'd, I'd like to see it continue and uh, this afternoon and get that input. I would too. Is everybody else okay with them continuing? Getting widespread approval here. I have that direction. Thank you. Okay. And I need to call on him and now call on you. Um, yep. Councilman Madam Chair, I'd like to uh, clarify the motion that I made, make sure everybody was clearly. When I went and talked to some people you know, in the audience, as I walked around, I didn't have any lunch because I didn't want to eat today. But uh, I heard somebody said, uh, you take uh, 1.6 million off the table. I said, not to the motion that I made, and I want to clarify the motion again. This is a motion that I read that I have in front of me. City of Tampa would like to withdraw from further consideration depending TAP and MOU and agreement upon the 60% design 
The city will return at an appropriate time for further discussion. That was a motion that I made, and that was a motion that I read. Now, someone in the audience told me that I said, I, I don't believe I said that, but it's on tape. I just want clarity on my part. I don't want to think to anybody that I'm trying to pull the wolves over their eye. I'm not. Questions? Councilwoman? Yes. Um, while we're on the subject, I would like to make a motion that the city of Tampa should provide any draft and final reports pertaining to TAP at least 60 days in advance of bringing back any proposal for reconsideration by this board. I have no objection with that. Would you second it? Okay. Or is he seconding? I'm sorry. He's second. Yeah. Second. Um, we do have a motion and a second. Does everybody understand the motion? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 I'd like saying opposed. Should that pass? Okay. So can I ask one, <laughs> sure. one more clarifying question here, at least for me? I, so we went ahead under the um, item A and approved the agreement mm -hmm. with the city of Tampa. It, to me, it was I, I wasn't quite sure where Council Member Miranda was going in his original comments, but I did get the idea that he was asking to withdraw the conversation about the MOU and the conversation about the whole issue re regarding the funding. That, that was the distinct feeling that I got from that. So um, since there's no, ad I, I, and I'm still not sure what he just took away so I, I'm, so are we still giving the money that's going to be under the scrutiny of the agreement a yes in my opinion i didn't never spoke about a million six i spoke just what i said a few seconds ago and I, i'll read you the motion again for clarity this is a motion that i read right here city of tampa would like to withdraw from further consideration the pending tep DAP and MOU Memorandum of Understanding and Agreement upon the completion of the 60% design, the city will return an appropriate time for further discussion. That was it. Okay. Um, but you've, you've asked for some money that's tied to something that's short of 60%. I mean, we're talking about a time frame. I just, so I just, I, you know, we're, we're, we're not going to be, we're going to be reimbursing up through, I think it's June of next year. And so I don't know if that means 15%, 30%, 45%, 60%. That's all we're doing. So I just want to make sure we're clear when we leave here. Our intent was to do through June of next year that the feasibility study would be finished and that kind of thing. So let me refer to the city of uh, Tampa's yes, attorney. Yes, I'd like order. To, can, you, to can somebody grab? I never brought up the one six, and maybe she can explain it perfectly. Were you clear? The city um, will certainly take back the action that the board did today to the administration, but it is the city's position that we would not be able to accept the agreement as proposed today with the the dates included in Exhibit A, um, as it would not um, support what we are intending okay. to do. Okay. So we've approved it. Now, it's nothing is signed yet, of course, so you're going to take it back to see if, if you can get the signature on it or if it's going to come back for additional changes. My understanding is that there, there's no additional changes. The agreement as per, that was approved today is Exhibit A. Okay. Okay. Oh, I thought you just said you were going to take it back well, to your we're, administration we're, for something. I didn't know what. For their consideration and be made aware of what occurred here today. Okay. Okay. Because when we take when we take it back, mm -hmm. um, we will uh, make the mayor aware of what happened. Okay. Um, if the administration, if the mayor is going to move forward on it, it has to be approved by council. So it would have to go to council. So it's a two-step okay. process. Right. Gotcha. So so your signature still has to get that kind of approval. I get it. Thank you. Yes. 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 Thanks for that clarification. Yeah. We, we've approved it. Now you guys are going to take it back to see if our approve our approved copy is okay or not and you'll let us know correct whether we would accept it or not correct yes, sir yep. 
Right, and I've had many conversations with the mayor, as you all know, we've got a new mayor, we've got a new city council, except <coughs> Councilman Miranda and Vieira, um, so, and Maniscalco, so we, you have a majority of the members that are brand new. Um, so everybody's just getting up to speed. Okay, so I didn't want to leave with a, a, another unclear position. The city's position was to accept the Exhibit B agreement with those dates, mm -hmm. um, with the approval and the motion to um, s provide to the city the Exhibit A agreement. At this point, it isn't probably anticipated that we would not approve that. But we have to take it back for that. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we are done with H. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just not clear on what, where we are uh, with TAP. Um, the MOU is not going to be considered anymore at this point until Tampa, uh, <coughs> such time as Tampa decides to bring it back for consideration. Are we spending 1.6 million still? I mean, can can somebody please explain to me? Yeah, Jean, exactly where we're at. Uh, the city is withdrawn from consideration the TAP MOU and agreement from further consideration by Tampa Bay Water, but will return at an appropriate time, most likely co uh, co coinciding with the completion of the 60% design. So that would be um, in the future. Or that the, would be when? In the future. Uh -huh. um, and we, it, right now it was going to be come back for consideration in June of 2020, and we are re removing that from that consideration. As far as the 1.6, that's what we were just, Discussing the board has approved the exhibit a uh, format of the agreement and The city will probably not approve that not agree to that, but we are taking it back uh, for consideration by the mayor and the and to See what their inclination her inclination is and So if the I mean theoretically if the mayor approved that then we'd be right back here or well, I, they'd have to approve actually, the agreements. Right. If the, if the mayor decides to agree with that format, it would have to go to city council for their approval before it would, could be completely executed and agreed to. And then it would come back here, or no, we've already signed off on it. So yes. they could decide to... Well, we've signed off on Plan B. Plan A. Oh. Plan, uh, plan A, A, I mean. Uh, they've... And what they're saying is um, they don't, she doesn't know if they would accept going back to plan A. Mm -hmm. But she makes a point, if the council approves plan A, then we're done. We're done. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, if uh, the mayor agrees to plan A and city council agrees, then they can bring it back here and move forward days. to 2020. So, so that's different than what I heard when I heard Withdrawing from further consideration. That's a, that's, that's a separate action. That, that's what I heard was that just forget the whole thing. We're not going to bother. That's what I, thought. That's what I heard, mm -hmm. which was the city of Tampa saying, we don't want anything to do with the MOU. We don't want anything with your money. We just, we're done. Withdrawing from further consideration. Well, that's, that's not what she's saying. What I thought that meant. They, but they, they regrouped. That wasn't what was said. Well, I think we just have to wait and see if they accept the plan A. All right. The the question I've got, Madam Chairman, if if they're withdrawing and they're they're saying basically the MOU is dead, then until sometime well we might might bring it up in 2020, then I I don't see us giving them 1.6 million dollars. That that was predicated on this whole thing moving forward. I would tend to agree with that. I think you're right. I mean, if they come back, I mean, they can't get the work done. Basically, she's, I mean, I think you, you said you can't really get that, all that work done by 2020, June 2020. Correct. And so it's really at that point, I mean, it's not going to go forward. 
even if they accepted the plan A, they can't really execute it because it's not feasible in the time frame. So. Sorry, um, so, but there was something about uh, if 60% design, are we um, funding that? Or they're gonna do that on their own dime and then come back to us? Well, if, if I could offer some comments, at least as yes. to my understanding as to where this board is at, at the moment, and um, I certainly would take direction if I have an incorrect understanding. Um, it's my understanding that the city of Tampa has withdrawn from consideration by this board, the TAP agreement and MOU. In prior meetings, there had been discussion of that coming back to the Tampa Bay Water Board for further consideration um, in June of 2020. And what I'm hearing from the city of Tampa is that that is no longer going to occur. Separate and apart from that, we have the co-funding agreement, which was the board's offer to co-fund the city of Tampa's work through June of 2020 up to the amount of $1.6 million. Based on action just you know, taken in, in recent moments by the board, you have approved attachment A to item H3, which was Tampa Bay Water's initial draft of the agreement. It was my understanding up until just a moment ago that we were going to be offering that agreement to the city of Tampa for their action. If they were to approve both by the mayor and council that agreement, that would be Tampa Bay Water's commitment to co-fund the work that is described in that agreement up to $1.6 million. I'm now hearing some concern about um, spending that money in light of the city um, saying that they will not be coming back or that they do not want to commit to coming back to this board at any particular date with the TAP agreement and MOU. I'm hearing concern about spending that money um, from Tampa Bay Water, offering that to the city of Tampa. You could take some further action if that is your desire to pull that money off the table in light of the development by the city of Tampa. That is up to the board at this moment. But based on your action just earlier in this meeting, you had approved um, Attachment A to the supplemental item H3, which was um, Tampa Bay Water's version of the co-funding agreement. Okay. <clears throat> Bottom line, they withdrew. We said, if you uh, want to even consider, it's got to be plan A or nothing, right? That's it. And so, and <clears throat> we all know it will be hard for them to ramp up and get that done by June of 2020. <clears throat> So I think right now it's withdrawn, and until we hear from you. So, so, so should our funding be withdrawn as well? Well, that's why I didn't yeah. want to approve the motion because I, I didn't think it was appropriate given the fact that they withdrew. Uh, but I think there was a desire to make the statement that we are sticking with Plan A June 2020. Okay, we did. I don't think it hurts anything. It doesn't. Well, what I would need to know from the board is, you know, do you want me to transmit that agreement to the city of Tampa to offer them to the $1.6 million? If you do that, there is the possibility that they will accept that and sign the agreement, and we would then, the agency would then be committed to co-fund up to $1.6 million. If you don't want that to happen, I would need, you know, direction from the board Okay. their action from the board to withdraw that. Jean, do you want it transmitted to, to the mayor? That's up to you. I don't think it's up to me. I'm sorry. Well, we voted yeah. on something. Right. We, and technically, she has to transmit what we voted on to you. Right. Technically. Do, is, do you still want that to happen? I don't believe that that's the city's um, weak we can't tell you whether to transmit it or not. You have to make that. Well, decision. we took action. I just, uh, from, I, I mean, I'm, I was going like to say, it. I, th I was thinking you would say, no, it's not necessary. But the fact that we voted on it and we gave, the direction is for her to transmit if she, and right now that's the path we're taking. And if you desired I, I not to do that, I would suggest that there be action by the yeah, board. Yeah, if to we're not, if you don't want to 
have her transmit because that's what our action did when we voted on the 2020. We need to then make a motion not to, um, to tell our attorney not to transmit um, the MOU agreement back to the city of Tampa. I'll make that motion because the representative on our board from the city of Tampa has rejected that very document. So, uh, you know, in the spirit of congeniality, I think we should not be transmitting something that the uh, representative from Tampa um, exactly. is the only nay vote on. So I don't see this board forcing that over to Tampa when their representative voted against it. So I'll move that we rescind that motion. Oh. Um, I could pass a gavel and second it because I didn't think we should have voted on it to begin with because of that point. Unless I'm not getting any signals from the city people. You don't care. So um, I'll pass the gavel. I'll second. To rescind the motion. Okay. You, you, rescind, you second it to rescind. Mm -hmm. No. Yes, I just, I, I'm sorry, I just kind of chuckled at the collegiality of taking back our 1.6 million. Um, um, it sounds reasonable. Um, my, my concern is, and I just don't want to lose track of accountability and transparency. And um, I guess the city of Tampa is signaling that they don't want the money, and they also don't want the reporting requirements that are specified in the document as well, it just so happens, which is why I just made the motion that if anything comes back, we want to see copies of all draft and final reports related to TAP 60 days in advance. So because we just made that motion and it was passed unanimously, I'm fine with supporting the motion to rescind on the floor. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know what I always say, the horse is dead, get off. <clears throat> yeah, well, again, I'm, um, I am, you know, I, I, I think of myself as a, as a real baseball fan and baseball player. You brought up the baseball analogy, and I know when I think a curveball is going to be thrown or a fastball or whatever, and yet, again, surprised by what's going on. I mean, I had no idea that this was coming, coming out of left field, continuing with the analogy. I, I still don't know what's going on unless there's been a change from indirect potable reuse to direct potable reuse, or there's a, all of a sudden, you guys wanted, weren't going to get the money from the states, so it's really important that we kind of, not that we're agreeing with it, but that we're going to allow that transition money to help you guys go through this next year of investigation, and now, nope, we don't need it, we don't want it, and uh, so again, I think the part that really bothers me is that we didn't know what was that, that was coming. That this is all coming out out of just out of nowhere. And again, we're supposed to be in this to thing together. And so I still still don't know what's going on. I I really don't. Um, it was so critically important a month ago or two months ago to get this money, and uh, we probably should have waited till June after the the legislators left because once they knew that we were going to pay, they said no, we're not going to come up with it. I get that part of it, but I mean, I, I just don't. I just don't know again what's going on. And I just, I really would love to see a more uh, collegial uh, uh, work on this, so that we are all. Because I got to tell you something. We until until recently, Tampa Bay Water had tap and or sharp, maybe a different version of tap, on its long-range master plan. Because we saw the significance of that effort. And so when Tampa said, we're not going to give any up, up any reclaimed for this master water plan process, we thought, well, then why should we have it still be a part of it, you know? So I just think that, you know, at some point we just have to say, let's move on. We got, we got master water plan to work to do. And maybe in five years when we do it again, uh, I think in the meantime, we ought to be doing our own kind of reclaimed uh, uh, parallel research because we don't seem to be getting cooperation to do it together. But Tampa Bay Water needs to be continuing to look at this. Um, so I, I don't know, I, I, I yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Council. Um, 
I'm, I'm curious at this point in the conversation, does it make sense to bring up the representative from Swift Mud? I mean, does the representative have an opinion on what we're discussing and what we're about to do? Apparently he does. Come on up. Joel Brown, Swift Mud. So a lot of the conversation we're not really a party to when it comes to the funding. There have been determinations on the current application that's in-house with the district that is still active with the city of Tampa, that it is ranked low priority because there are inconsistencies with our funding metrics and, and board governing board policies. The activity is being discussed when the scope of your agreement are standalone. There might be some similar language, but that's a separate process. We have separate milestones for the projects that have already been undertaken and the efforts and investments towards the augmentation pro the Tampa augmentation project. But this is a totally separate conversation. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, so so the motion on the table is to rescind the rescind the monies that we have rescind the motion. May, uh, rescind yeah, the motion, motion that motion gave that the monies to mm -hmm. uh, to the city of Tampa. Right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> he just did that. He just did that, by the way. Was he messing with us? Uh -huh. I just want to get you going again, Commissioner. <laughs> okay. Uh, council member. Okay, we are done with H3, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Mr. Jordan, continue. I won. Yes, I won. Yes, and D3 at the same time. Yes, ma'am, we have a request on several of these items to talk about some consent items, and staff is prepared to do that. Uh, right now, we have uh, Mr. John Kennedy uh, from our engineering department to talk about the South Central Hillsborough County water supply improvements. Thank you, Madam Chairman and members of the board. Today's presentation updates you on a short-term program that's proposed to meet Hillsborough County's south area needs. We've been before you several times over the past uh, months on this uh, with a memorandum of understanding that as, as a, as a pre-statement to the presentation, that memorandum of understanding was to address a longer term need with longer term projects. Based on updated demand projections showing that the need is now before the end of 2024 and the fact that the MOU has been deferred, we have shifted from a focus on those longer term solutions that were in the MOU to a short-term program that can be implemented in time. Short-term program, in order to be implemented in time, will focus on existing points of delivery uh, because we won't have enough time to run to a new connection. Uh, it'll deliver more of existing water supplies that already have water use permits so that we don't need to obtain a new water use permit. And, they, and by doing this, we'll be, we can be online before the end of 2024 with enough capacity to carry Hillsborough County South Area needs until the next water supplies in the master water plan are online. The long-term program, that master water plan that's reported to you under D3, will continue the evaluation of what has been called the SHARP project. This map has been presented to you before. It's a very large scale map and shows where we deliver drinking water to Hillsborough County. The green star is Hillsborough Central Hillsborough plant. The other two stars are at Hillsborough's Lithia water treatment plant. They're approximately 20 miles apart. The short-term plan we're presenting today will expand delivery to both the central and the Lithia facilities using existing treated water supplies from our surface water treatment system. The short-term plan does not require an MOU, does not require a reclaimed or recharge credit formula, or a water use permit. In summary, it will be faster to implement, although it does not solve the long-term deficit. That long-term solution lies in the next update to your long-term master water plan. This slide was presented to the board in February 2018, a year and a half ago, and is where the short-term plan was first evaluated. At that time, in early 2018, we were working towards an end of 2025 project delivery, and we had seven years to get that done, and because we had seven years to get that done, uh, we had developed eight different projects for your consideration that could be delivered within that time frame. 
In mid-2019, with a shortened 2024 project delivery date, we're left with five years to implement, so we took a revised look, especially at options one through three, for cost, operations, maintenance, reliability, <coughs> schedule, and capacity. Options one through three rely on delivering existing water supplies. The reevaluation showed that option one, which centerpiece is a new booster station on the Tampa Bay water system that can feed more water to Lithia, will use basic technology simplifying the operations and maintenance of adding the facility, and that it can deliver 5 million gallons a day of increased flow through the existing transmission main by raising the pressure in it. And with increased delivery also to the county's central facility, adds enough capacity to carry the area into the next update of the master water plan. Short-term action plan includes these items. Hillsborough County to take at least 12 million gallons a day at its central facility and explore evaluating taking more. Tampa Bay water evaluate location and capacities for a new booster station along the existing Brandon South Central transmission main. Tampa Bay water complete the pipeline corridor studies that you had previously approved. Although these were important for the MOU, they're also important for the master water plan because they're going to identify the scope and capacity of those transmission mains that will be needed eventually. And then we'll work on a new MOU with Hillsborough upon receipt of a written request from the county for a final location, schedule, and delivery pressure for connecting a new transmission main or pipeline to its proposed water campus. Tampa Bay Water, as I said previously, will evaluate the feasibility of what has been called the SHARP project using the net benefits uh, with the next update to the master water plan and will be reported to you under those, under those uh, agenda items. The next steps to implement the short-term plan that we recommend are start the hydraulic studies and property analysis work using the as-needed and piggyback contract task orders that were approved today on the consent agenda under item C2. Work with the county to increase delivery now to at least 12 million gallons a day and hopefully more at its own central facility. Uh, we'll realign the capital improvement program uh, to focus on a booster station. And over the next six to nine months, we plan to bring back to you for your individual approval a booster site and easement recommendation for property acquisition, option agreements for those property acquisitions, and procure a design engineer once we select a site. Be happy to answer your questions. Any questions? I'll move the item. Yes. Um, thank you. And um, thank you, John, for your work on this. I know, Chuck, um, you really have worked with our staff quite a bit. And um, I've been, I feel like this is a baby I've been given birth to for quite a while. I do want to let you all know over the uh, dry drought, we used over 100 million gallons a day. A hundred million gallons a day, the highest water usage we've ever had. So, second. Um, so we do have motion and second to approve item I one. Is there any further discussion? Um, I just um, have a quick question in the backup, like on page three, um, bullet point number three. The. Um, Tampa Bay Water will evaluate sharp feasibility within the schedule for the next update to the long-term master water plan. Um, it, it seems like this is, again, what should be a real important front and center board decision to talk about what projects that were, I mean, we just voted on the plan on December 18th, or December 2018, and now there's this final recommendation, just part, put part of this project into the next five-year plan, and it, it just seems like that just really needs this. This warrant. This is the type of topic that really deserves board scrutiny and discussion. We keep getting sidetracked with TAP, but to me, this seems like one of our most important jobs. So, um, yeah. Uh, yes, ma'am, and <clears throat> thank you, Councilwoman Rice, for that question, and. <clears throat> Uh, the board, as you stated, did approve three projects moving forward in the master water plan update, SHARP, uh, groundwater supply via SHARP being one of those. Um, <clears throat> what we did is, as we were looking at South Central Hillsborough County and meeting with the county, uh, we, it looked like there could be an opportunity to take a master plan project to see if perhaps it could be implemented sooner 
that could give us additional capacity. As it turns out, for a number of reasons, the MOU deferred, and certainly the, the, big, the big reason was the demands increasing, then <clears throat> that turned out not to be an option for the short term, but it's always been in the master plan. And we were had we, we we discussed those, and so what we were planning to do is we certainly need to continue discussions with the county uh, to see about where their direction is going after this. But uh, and, and and certainly, uh, if it's the board's pleasure to uh, revisit any of those projects in the master water plan, we're certainly you know welcome that discussion. Mm -hmm. But that's why we're continuing because it has always been in the master water plan. It was just looked at to see if we could implement it perhaps right. sooner. Right, and this is not new. And the master water plan, I mean, we've been discussing this for years, um, actually, um, you know, before several of you came on the board. So this is not a new project. It's just they're going to continue to keep it under consideration in the master water plan. That's it. And you all are going to meet later this month as a board, a Hillsborough County Meeting Board, to, dis week. Okay, to discuss the future of reclaimed water, among other things. I'm oh, assuming. yeah. I mean, it's not, that's not, I mean, that's a very small part of the presentation. We're just having um, major water issues. Quality is one of them, uh, water quality. So, um, yeah, that's it. And Madam Chair, if I may just add that we will certainly continue to keep the board updated. We give a board updates at every, pretty much every board meeting, and any any news or any information that uh, that uh, we, we get, we'll certainly bring to the board. Right. But, yeah, I just had one other comment. I just want to make sure that at some point, and, and right now we still have the Sharp project on our master. That, that there's three uh, three projects that we're looking at. Um, and if for some reason, I, I mean, I, you know, we're, we reacted to the TAP alternative and then that, that got pulled off. Um, we've got the SHARP project on there for some time, as you said. Mm -hmm. As long as it stays there, I think that's fine, you know, no problem. But if it comes off for some, I, I really want us as a board to, to look at that potable reuse issue uh, going down the road. You know, as, as, maybe it's not going to be in this master water plan review. Maybe it is in the next one. I don't know. But I think it's so important that we start tackling this thing and not in reaction to a bo one of our board members bringing some kind of issue that might cause a problem with our interlocal agreement. So I, I think it's important that we do that now, maybe change the interlocal. But So I am, I'm a little concerned as they start to drop off that we kind of lose sight of that being one of our important long-range projects. Uh, projects. Oh, no, it's not dropping off. Okay. I mean... We have to consider all options. I mean, we're out of water in four years, out completely. So Out of water when, I'm sorry? In about four years. I know they've got 2024, 20, well, four or five years. But, I mean, so every option for us is always on the table. Uh, but it's always in working with Tampa Bay Water. Oh, okay. Right. Great. Thanks. Okay, now you wanted to. Do I call for a vote? No. Okay, all in favor. What are we voting on now? I won. I won. I won. And all in favor of I won, say aye. 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 Like saying opposed, show that pass. Aye. And do we have to go back and vote on D3 now? Is we have to vote on D3, and maybe Councilwoman Rice, if you could tell us why you uh, removed it and what questions you'd like to have answered. Well, generically, I think anything dealing with the master water plan and also with regional demand management and water conservation doesn't belong in the consent agenda. I think it belongs front and center on our regular agenda for regular discussion. Okay. Good so, talk. Good agree. suggestion. Okay. I agree. So don't we, put we, master water plan on the consent. Noted, and we will, we will certainly not do that. Okay. Thank you. Gotcha. Okay, so can you do you want to make a motion to approve item D3? Um, motion to approve item D3. Second. Okay, we have motion. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I know you're going to call me. I do have a quick question about it. The $3 million feasibility study for the desal plant expansion, mm -hmm. it's a lot of money. Yes, ma'am. And I, Madam Chair, if it's okay, <clears throat> Mr. Hurd, to address that question. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, board members. 
Yes, the uh, $3 million feasibility estimate of scope is includes for DSAL uh, pilot testing. That's about a million dollars of that estimate. So because of the criticality of the pretreatment system and the experience that we've had with that facility, we believe that there should be some pilot testing uh, of any potential uh, treatment changes at that facility. And that, as compared to surface water, it's a lot different because with surface water, we have tried and proven processes there that we're comfortable with. Uh, but with desal, there's a lot more uh, moving parts and challenges, so that's why it's a little more involved. Um, could you please provide me any um, studies that Tampa Bay Water has done the last 10 years um, looking at the same issue? And you can just provide me a link to where the it exists online or send me a PDF so I can, at the very least, just you know, scan an executive summary. Sure. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve IMD3. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign the post, show that pass. And we are now on J. And who is? Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Steve Fleischacker will present uh, item J1. And I also think that uh, there were some questions in regard to uh, uh, D four and D five, if I understood correctly, that are in conjunction with this particular presentation? No, uh, no, that was on J three. I'm sorry. J two uh J two was D six. That's D6. right, I'm sorry, I misspoke. J two was D six and J three was four. Right, there's not one on this, but I'm I do apologize. Where are we? Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the board. Today's water quality update We'll cover an overview of the Water Quality Services Department, a discussion of water quality compliance with local, state, federal standards, and an update on the Exhibit D Water Quality Parameters Modification Study. Tampa Bay Water's mission is to provide clean, safe drinking water, and we do so every day through hard work and a continued commitment to water quality. The Water Quality Services Department includes three groups, water quality, source water assessment, and the laboratory. Our water quality group provides water chemistry and water treatment process knowledge and expertise. This group's focus is to understand and respond to different water conditions in, the, in our system and to track new developments in the water industry. The Source Water Assessment Group conducts ongoing monitoring and evaluation of our water supplies and multi-barrier treatment processes. And our laboratory is responsible for agency water quality sampling and analysis. We have 500 regional water quality monitoring sites. We collect 6,000 sa samples annually, and we perform 70,000 water quality tests each year in our state certified lab. Together, the three groups of our department work collaboratively with the member governments through the Water Quality Working Group. During monthly meetings, this group discusses compliance, ongoing studies, and distribution systems experiences and knowledge. Tampa Bay Water is a recognized leader in water research. As you heard earlier from Mr. Jordan, Tampa Bay Water received the Water Research Foundation's 2019 Outstanding Subscriber Award for Applied Research at the AWWA Annual Conference in Denver last week. Through our national participation with regulatory agencies and in research projects, the utility has access to data, reports, and information that we continually use in our operations. We actively participate with the Water Research Foundation, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, and the American Water Works Association, as well as universities and other utilities on rules, regulations, and research. We're currently working on 10 collaborative projects that focus on the key areas of source water, water treatment, and transmission systems. The drinking water we provide our member governments meets or is better than local, state, and federal safe drinking water standards and regulations. Those include both the Safe Drinking Water Act standards 
and the more stringent local Exhibit D requirements. These Exhibit D requirements are local parameters the member government set in the agency's master water supply contract. Tampa Bay Water is required to meet these limits at points of connection. We report test results regularly to the member governments and to this board. I'd now like to provide an overview of the agency's current efforts related to the Exhibit D modification study. The following slides will update you on the technical objectives of the study, the, programmatic, the programmatic approach we've taken to the study, the status of the work, and next step. The study objectives are to evaluate the desired water quality concentrations available treatment technologies to achieve those concentrations, and to provide planning level capital and operating costs for all identified treatment alternatives. A guiding principle is that the desired water quality concentrations need to be delivered to all points of connection between Tampa Bay Water and member governments. It does not necessarily require common treatment techniques for all source waters, and the treatment technologies will also be screened for their potential to address unregulated contaminants in the future. As you know, the Tampa Bay water system includes different source waters, surface water, groundwater, and desalination water. These waters are added to the transmission system and delivered to points of connection all along the transmission route. These additions and subtractions all need to be taken into account when addressing water quality throughout the transmission system. To this end, a modeling tool will be refined in the, in the work to predict within certain limitations water quality conditions at various locations in our transmission system. This tool will be used to determine what is possible in terms of treatment in order to properly evaluate the feasibility of proposed Exhibit D changes at all points of connection. For the modeling tool to work best, the entire water quality database was examined and a supplemental characterization program was developed and implemented. We're using these tests to better understand how water quality affects disinfection byproducts formation and flushing in our member government systems. The testing program is being done by our Tampa Bay Water staff. We've employed a three-phased approach to the Exhibit D study. First, meetings were held throughout 2017 and 2018 with member government utility directors and water quality staff. During these meetings, consensus was reached on which parameters to study, limits were proposed for each parameter, and they were prioritized. The top priority was total organic carbon, or TOC. <clears throat> TOC is a naturally occurring in the environment. Higher levels of TOC can affect the member distribution systems in terms of flushing volumes and disinfection byproducts formation. To study these modifications, Tampa Bay Water developed and discussed the scope of work with the utility directors and hired Hazen and Sawyer to lead the study. This was phase one. During the second phase of the study, we have completed much of the planning and sampling efforts, including completing a water quality database review and selecting locations for a model to predict <coughs> blended water scenarios. This work is wrapping up now. The final phase will involve additional lab bench studies further modeling tool refinement, evaluating treatment options, and preparing a draft report with cost estimates. These findings will be reviewed and discussed with the member government utility directors and water quality professional staffs, including how these results affect their distribution systems, and if a regional free chlorine maintenance program evaluation should be undertaken given Exhibit D modification study findings. The regional free chlorine maintenance program evaluation was originally requested by member government utility directors. 
Question. Yes. On that phase one, um, you said we reached a consensus. Did Was that a unanimous uh, a feeling, or was there any groups that had a problem with what we reached in phase one? No, it, it, was, it, was, a, it was a consensus of the group. There was nobody who was opposed, okay. and this was with Tampa Bay water staff. This was with the utility directors and some supporting water quality staff. So everyone was in agreement. Everybody was in the room for the discussion. That's correct. Okay. Just want to make sure because I don't want to lose anybody along the way that all of a sudden water quality becomes an issue that we've all agreed on what to measure. So just that's great. Thank in you. fact, for further clarification, what happened was each one of the member governments had a list of parameters. They then selected what they thought should be the numerical values. All numerical values were then compared to one another, and a group discussion ensued to ultimately come up with the target for the study. So there could be some differences in that priority list among utility directors. But at the very end, everybody agreed that's how we should proceed with the study. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Over the summer and early fall, we will be completing phases two and three and anticipate bringing recommendations to the board later this year. Potential options for the board could include adding capital improvement projects, modifying Exhibit D standards, a combination of those two, or maintaining the status quo. That completes today's water quality update. I welcome any comments and questions. Thank you. Yes, Councilmember Rice. Thank you, Chair. Um, again, um, I, I'd drawn attention to page four earlier when we were talking about getting uh, copies of minutes uh, of meetings, uh, like the, the water quality working group. I'm not really... I'd like to know more about what this group does. I think the board should be privy to the minutes and discussions of this board um, in the past and going forward. Um, I, yes, the utility director group discussions are important, but these discussions also need to be in front of this board. Um, I mean, water quality exhibit D, huge. It's a big thing. Um, I believe the last time we went through this discussion and made a decision, it was a $300 million a project, and I believe um, even my member government had, you know, the, the previous Tampa Bay Water Rep had taken the decision back to their member government, got a resolution passed, and then brought it back to Tampa Bay Water. So I just want to be mindful of the process of working with the board that, you know, I don't know how other board members feel, but I want to be able to take these um, decisions and discussions and recommendations back to my member government and come back here with a vote knowing exactly how my colleagues and my mayor and my staff um, are looking at this as well. It's a big price tag and a few things are more important than water quality, right? Absolutely. But well, again, this is just the type of thing I think the board needs to really have. Um, we really need our finger on the pulse of issues like this. Uh, if I recall correctly, uh, in our prior meeting at the executive committee, you had requested that <clears throat> we provide a water quality update at each meeting, and, yeah. and we've talked about that, and that's going to happen. Thank you. Another question. Uh, the consistency of the water being delivered to the points of contact, do they differ throughout the Tampa Bay water system? There will be differences because of the way water is supplied and enters the, in the transmission system. And then at the same time, water is delivered to certain member governments. So there will be variability as the water goes from start to end. We monitor all those points of connection. They're not dramatic differences, but there are differences in, in concentrations of various parameters that we monitor. Is it a difference also in the type of what one of the type of the waters that we're using or just in how the water changes as it moves moves along? Well, it's actually both. Oh. Uh, one contributes to the other. One of the key factors of this study is to look at how the water quality changes as it as it moves through the transmission system 
as different well fields, for example, enter the transmission system, the ultimate goal of this, this Exhibit D modification study is to look at how those things vary. And the idea would be when you're looking at treatment options to, to dampen out those ups and downs. And that's what gets accomplished with treatment. Okay. Thank you. And hand it, Commissioner Starkey. Just a question. I'm looking on page 13. And um, on 2016, for St. Pete, <coughs> January, February, March, April, May, June, water quality, the, the coliform rule compliance, it says no data. What, why is that? I'm just curious. Oh, because we haven't received it from the member government at the time this report was prepared. OK. Um, Madam Chair, um, I have spoken to my staff um, about that and um, uh, registered a little bit of displeasure with not having that ready for today. So I apologize. We'll be getting that in as soon as possible. OK, because it seems like that's old data that should be readily available right. somewhere. Yeah. I'd, I don't disagree. Yeah, thanks. Um, More okay. concerned to her. Yeah. Anything else? Um, just, I just want to say that this should be the number one concern for us right now. Um, it is a top complaint in Hillsborough County, and we have areas of our county that have significant water quality issues. Staff is aware of it. Um, <clears throat> I've been talking about it for, say, I've been on the board eight and a half years, probably six and a half. And um, we continue to kick the can down the road. And it's now been 13 years since they last brought it up in 2006, where that board could have spent $300 million, and they didn't. <clears throat> so I'm just saying that I know we're talking about all these new projects and water supply. That's important, but we have to balance it with the quality. It's very, very important. And if one day we have to raise rates, um, and we don't want people to say, why should I pay more for my water? Because it just, it's awful. We don't want that. And so I'm just going to keep banging the drum. Let's get it done. Let's just do it. I don't want to kick the can anymore. And that's why I was asking the question about how the water arrives at those points of contact throughout our system and how different they are. I know we have a, we have a plant at the Keller plant in North County that receives water from Tampa Bay Water. And then I'm not even going to begin to explain what happens to that water, but we do some treatment to it um, and uh, so that it really changes a little bit the nature mm -hmm. of the water that's delivered into our system. So I don't know that everybody does that same thing, but we recognize that there were some blending efforts that needed to, be, to happen and, and so that it could main, the aging of the water could be okay as it goes through our system. Um, so I, I'd like to understand what parts that we're each individually providing for those points of contact and what solution would be good for all of us on water quality. Because you're right, we have to balance that. Clearly getting water to South Hillsborough County has got to be 1A. If this is 1B, maybe, but it's right there with it. I agree right. with you. Well, I mean, you can't flush and chlorinate yourself out of this problem. No. I mean, right. and that's kind of where we've been, mm -hmm. I think, for the last 13 years, to be honest. So let's just do it. Bring us a plan that we can all say, let's invest in this. It's important. That's my thank you. Thoughts. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, what? Mm -hmm. a, oh, no. Next one. Okay. Uh, J two. Who's going to do that? Yes, um, uh, J two is the uh, annual demand forecast evaluation and long term uh, demand forecast. Uh, Mr. Truso Asafa will make this presentation. And then D six. We're going to bring up D six at the same time. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. This item was deferred uh, in February, and I'm here to provide you an overview of our uh, long-term demand forecast <clears throat> updates. Um, Tampa Bay Water conducts 
annual demand forecast updates since 2009, and there are two uh, main reasons do for doing that. Uh, the deterministic or point forecast are used to support our budgeting process. On the other hand, the probabilistic demand forecast is used to assess change in demand as well as economic growth, which provide us a wide range of uh, demand as we uh, look forward. The probabilistic demand forecast is typically used to support our master water plan, um, answering questions, when is the potential new supply source that comes into our system. Uh, demands are forecasted by what we call the member government demand planning areas, and this uh, match to the utility service area. We have seven of those areas, as you see on the map. Uh, Hillsborough County has a couple of them with the city of Tampa service in between the two. Uh, and these models are done for each of the major uh, sectors, uh, single family, multifamily, and non-residential. And we do update these mo uh, models as we get improved information about local growth as well as economic outlook. They do use average or normal weathers going forward. <clears throat> Just to give you a little bit of background how we actually do that, uh, we collect a variety of information, including uh, socioeconometric uh, data, for example, price, income, uh, person per household, and then weather, as well as employment, to tell us uh, an estimate of a typical unit use for those sectors. We also uh, collect uh, another set of data that includes the member government building data, property appraisers data and population projections. And this set of data actually helps us what are the number of those accounts today, as well as as we go forward 20 years, 30 years from, uh, from now. Combining these two sources provide what we say, uh, we term the uh, retail level deliveries. And finally, we add the unbilled or uh, wholesale supplies to give us the total demand by member government area. So what you see here is the uh, regional demand on the top figure is for the whole uh, regions and uh, it's expected to grow from where we are currently about 250 million gallon per day to about 300 million gallon per day by 2045. The lower graph shows that Tampa Bay water's delivery uh, it's also expected to grow uh, from current budgeted number for this fiscal years of 179 to about 220 by 2045. Uh, this slide shows that uh, demand projection by each of the member government uh, planning areas. You can see from the vertical uh, dot line on the left is a historical, uh, starting right after, uh, just before the Great Recession in 2007. And then on the right side of the dotted line is the uh, projection out into 2045. As you can see, we are expecting a growth demand in, in Hillsborough County, City of Tampa, Pasco, as well as others uh, to some extent. The small bump you see right before that line was drought time delivery in 2017. Uh, once we know what is the total regional demand for the next fiscal years, in this case, 256.4, uh, we typically subtract out member government sub-supply and then we add six million gallon per day for accounting uncertainty in Hillsborough River uh, when we need to supply water for the city. And that will give us a number of 180.8 uh, for next fiscal years. That was pre presented earlier by Ms. Sackett. This uh, slide shows you the next fiscal year's deliver expected delivery about 181. Uh, plus additional five years. As you can see, we expect a continued growth of demand from next year of 181 to 193 by 2025. Just to give you a perspective, uh, in 2007, at the height of the economy, uh, Tampa Bay Water delivered 186.4. So under normal weather condition, we're expecting that demand somewhere between 2022 to 2023. In summary, we see that the delivery for member governments in, uh, steadily growing from next year's budgeted number of almost 181 to 193 by 2025. 
Uh, in the long term, we also see continued increase. And uh, this year, uh, forecast compared to the prior year, we have seen a little bit of increase on, on uh, projection because of some of the optimistic uh, economic uh, projection. Tampa Bay Water will continue to update this. Uh, this is very important for us to understand the potential timing of new water supply sources. With that, I conclude my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? No, you did a great job. Uh, regarding this, this six, uh, this six typically provides a, a demand and supplies for where we are today as well as uh, uh, two, three years. <laughs> For example, in that we show uh, what are the year-to-day demand, how they compare from last year, uh, as well as looking ahead for the next two to three months. Uh, so for example, we are still in El Nino and some of those expectations, and also whether we will be in uh, any drought uh, or shortage. In this case, we don't expect one, but that's what uh, D6 uh, presents. Move approval, D6. Thanks. Second. Thank you very much. We have a, uh, thank you for your presentation, too. You. We have a motion to approve and a second to approve item D6. All, any questions, comments? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Like, sign, oppose, show that passed. And then we have our very last presentation is J3 and D4 and D5. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, board members. Uh, this is an update on the demand management implementation uh, development we've undertaken per board direction in August of 2018. Uh, the regional demand management plan that the board approved as part of the long-term water supply plan is designed to save about a half a million gallons a day in the first year of implementation and more than 11 MGD by 2030 if all members participate. The goal and timing are important because demand projections show we'll need an additional 10 MGD by 2028. So this program can help offset some of that demand and delay the need for new supplies at about a fifth of the cost of developing uh, our least expensive alternative supply. This program is, all, is designed to save water and money and it shows the public we've done everything we can to save water and basically pick the low hanging fruit before we develop a costly alternative source. We'll be using socioeconomic property appraiser and member, give, member government billing data, as Dr. Sefa mentioned, uh, to confirm successful implementation of the program's water saving centers. Uh, and this program is timed uh, to meet Swift Mud's 2020 funding cycle beginning October 1, 2019, to further reduce costs. A regional conservation makes sense for three major reasons. One, it costs less for all members rather than building new regional supplies and it saves additional operating costs like chemicals, power, things like, th like that. It delays the need for new supplies, which postpones new debt, and it shows the public we've done everything we can to save water through picking relatively low-hanging low fruit before we develop these costly alternative sources. There's public su support for conservation. We know from research the public wants to see that we're doing all we can as a region to save water before we build an alternative water supply source. Uh, actively, Actively working to reduce demands also helps benefit the region by helping keep more water in its natural environment, and it quantifiably reduces potential greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, in addition to the direct environmental benefit of reducing water withdrawals, there's also a benefit of reducing greenhouse gases uh, realized from not having to use additional electricity to pump and treat conserved water. As illustrated in this graph, reductions in greenhouse gas emissions equate to almost 100,000 tons by 2048 for just Tempe Water's electric consumption reductions using base year 2016 electric usage to calculate emissions, which is a conservative year. To make the program more even, even more cost effective, the board approved the application for co-funding from SWIFTMUD, the Water Management District. They initially approved Tempe Water to indicate a preference for providing block grants to regional entities for conservation programs, and they're calling them block grants. Uh, we have requested about $550,000 in cooperative funding from Swift Mud for 2020. We've received feedback that our request is highly ranked and likely to be funded. We expect to get almost a 50% match for our project from Swift Mud through 2030 time frame. Now, we're not asking for a 10-year commitment. Uh, we will be analyzing the effectiveness of the plan year to year and bringing recommended updates and funding requests to the board every year. We understand the importance of being consistent with the interlocal 
interlocal agreement of the master water supply contract. That's why we worked with your staff to develop a framework that provides member government input and direction. We met 10 times over the past several months uh, to address their questions and concerns to the following program structure. Here's how we think the program's gonna work. A member government demand management working group will assist with oversight uh, and Tampa Water will continue its role in planning and coordination of conservation. Our role in, our, in this program is strictly to plan, coordinate, and facilitate, uh, similar to the existing agreements and funding like we have with the Florida Friendly Landscape Program. The demand management working group will work with uh, Tampa Water staff on implementation efforts within their service areas. So we'll work through the members in their service areas uh, so the members will be touching their customers. Member governments may also continue to add additional conservation programs in their own service areas on their own. The planning group's been working with suggested, uh, each has been working uh, with, suggested, uh, with a suggestion that each member government designate a primary representatives and two alternate representatives. And then member governments that want to opt out of having the program implemented in their area will still remain part of the group. A separate selection committee made up of the member representatives will select a third party administrator and recommend the company for a single contract with Tampa Bay Water instead of multiple contracts. Regional marketing of the incentive programs and distribution of incentives will be handled by the administrator with oversight from the demand management working group on how those programs are portrayed in their service areas. The board ultimately approves implementation of this effort from the annual budgeting process to selection of all contractors working on the effort Member government staff through the demand management working group work on the day-to-day -day operation of the program with Tampa Bay Water staff and the third party administrator. Because the board directed staff to move forward and determine how implementation can occur, our focus is on members participating, but they do have the opportunity if they would like to opt out of programming occurring in their service area. Uh, in order to do that, staff is suggesting that a letter be sent to each member utility director and the board members for, for that member government uh, and finally, there's an opportunity to tweak and modify the program elements, at least annually based on, on feedback and program implementation data. Here's how the board is involved and directs this program. Note there are all the approvals come through the board. And there also may be opportunity to approve various subcontracts as well. And there's a few that we are looking at. As you can see, Tampa Water staff and your staff have made a lot of progress over the last few months. For the next steps, we need member governments to designate a primary and alternate representative for the demand management working group and to complete the development of qualifications and a scope of work for a third party program administrator. Once complete, it'll go out for competitive bid. A separate selection committee for requests for proposals made up of member government representatives will oversee the selection of the third party administrator. This is similar to the water loss pilot project that we uh, were gonna talk about. Uh, this is a sunshine based selection committee will select the highest rank submittal and recommend them to the board for a contract with Tampa Bay Water. In August, we'll return to the board to request approval to submit the co-funding request to the district for 2021. And we would like to begin marketing the incentive program ahead of the March 2020 start date to build awareness and interest among the targeted audiences. Finally, every April, we'll return to the board to present any enhancements or modifications to the plan based upon performance and to request funding for the next fiscal year. And with that, I'll take questions. I was wondering, because um, I believe in conservation as well. I think that's definitely the low-hanging fruit. Um, does Tampa Bay Water have a list of the conservation methods currently going on now by each member government? Yes. Yes, we. I'd have. love to see that. You know, I'd love no, to one see of the things apples that to apples comparison. We have. We we do track the numbers. Member governments give us their information on what they've done, what they're doing. Uh, we normally submit an a report. We didn't this year because we were developing this plan, but we have identified uh, what they've done historically. Additionally, uh, uh, Council Member Rice was going to bring up uh, item D5, and item D5 actually identifies things that member governments are doing on a regular basis every month. So there's some information in your packet. What we've, what we're doing is we get the information from member governments so we can identify what's already been done long term. So we track that, we add that to the billing data so we can track exactly what's happened where. Great, I didn't see that. I'm gonna look at it uh, with my one hand. 
And I can address items D4 and D5 if you'd like. Or you want to... uh, Councilwoman Rice. Um, thank you for the presentation. Um, yes, conservation is absolutely important. This is um, a slight departure for Tampa Bay Water. I believe the interlocal agreement had typically left it up to member governments to um, fund and uh, carry out their own conservation tactics. So um, using the Tampa Bay Water unitary rate to fund conservation programs throughout our jurisdiction is a little bit different. And as I think uh, Commissioner Starkey was getting to, um, each member government has, uh, we, buy it, we buy different amounts of water from Tampa Bay Water, and we also have different histories and levels of investment in conservation programs. So it seems to me that it would be fair as, as part of moving forward with your timeline that the um, conservation funding should reflect uh, uh, the percentage. It, it should be capped at a percentage of what each member government pays into Tampa Bay Water. So if, for example, I think the city of St. Pete, we, uh, we consume 20%, we buy 20% of Tampa Bay's water, uh, the funds that we would get for conservation would therefore also be capped at 20%. And that this is um, the capping at that percentage for each member government seems like a um, equitable way to distribute these funds. And that is a motion. Can I comment on that? Uh, just, <clears throat> just a simple uh, one comment. The one thing that I would say is that uh, we did have a, a legal opinion uh, made by council on uh, on our efforts, and I think the council can speak on that issue. Regarding the cost issues, um, the idea here is to defer capital expense that all member governments would pay in the future, and that's how we evaluated the program based upon a uniform penetration of programs uh, across the region uh, because the benefit occurs for all the member governments regardless, regardless of how much you pay. In light of... In light of the fact that we're having conversations about potential member governments developing independent water supply programs who wouldn't be even buying water from Tampa Bay Water, how do you reckon with the fact of giving a majority of the money to a member government who's not even purchasing water from Tampa Bay Water? Like, how does that work? All I can say is you, we have an unequivocal obligation to supply our member governments with water. Our part of our long-term water supply plan includes supplying all of our member governments with water, and that's the, that's the rationale that we used when we evaluated demand management programs, which is what is the forecast for the need for new supplies, what is the cost of that new supply to the region, and what is the benefit to the region? Yeah. Yes, Mr. Jordan. In my head, uh, Mr. Braciano, if I'm correct, that <clears throat> We will be bringing this and reviewing this for the board annually. So, and we're doing this based upon current, uh, you know, practice where we are right now. And if that were to change, we could certainly the board we could entertain that. But certainly, I understand your your other questions as well. But I thought I would offer that one item. Um, yeah, we can talk about it more offline. But it's this just it it doesn't seem like it's fair between the member governments. Did you? Okay, so we have to, um, there, there is a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Well, I, before I say, I wanted to get, she had a, I, I thought there was a comment that was looking from council. On the, Who was looking? He was? I just pointed out that council did provide a legal review. Uh, I understand that, but we, I mean, when somebody makes a motion, you have to second right away. Well, we've had a lot of discussion line. since the motion, so I just was continuing with that, but I'll second it so we can continue conversation. Yeah, right. I'm just trying to keep us on track. Um, we, we have had a lot of just interruption discussions uh, between motions, so try not to do that again, but um, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as Mr. Bracciano stated, you know, I was consulted while the group um, was evaluating the options and how it is they would proceed. I was consulted regarding Tampa Bay Water's role in conservation. Um, in both the interlocal agreement and the master water supply contract, Tampa Bay Water does have a defined role in conservation, and that is to, pl to plan and coordinate conservation while the member governments 
implement it and decide the, the means and methods, I think, are the terms that um, our staff uses. So the agency does have a role as our staff um, views the, the work that is being developed. Um, you know, Tampa Bay Water is staying within its role to plan and coordinate conservation and to make funding available through the Water Management District to the member governments um, in the block grant style that has been, um, funds have been requested for. Okay, um, is there any comment? I just want to add that I guess this is a formula we're going to use for everything, whatever water you buy or whatever, that, that's what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I, uh, is there any comment on the motion? I'm, I'm not sure. I, I would, uh, I, I'm not totally against the motion, but I just think it needs a little more thought, and I think staff needs to, I need to hear how does it affect the budget, how does it affect all the projects in general, or some projects going to be thrown out because we're now in a different, you know, distribution. Um, I, I just, I think I'd like more information. I mean, I'm not going to support it if we actually go forward today, but um, I would support just kind of uh, getting more information for a later meeting. Yes. Yeah, I just, <clears throat> I think the consumption part was just a kind of a way to have some type of parameter direction. Um, I mean, I think the way we save water is probably as important. The way we protect water loss I think is important. So if my water system has a 90% conversion to production to use, is, it's a one thing. But if I'm losing 50% of it on the way, you know what I'm saying? I think mm -hmm. those are all part, those are important things too. And so, I, I mean, I understand your point, and I, I don't mind waiting a little bit to kind of get, throw all those things in the hat. Right. But, I mean, I just, I'd like to see what everybody's doing before um, I decide to change the formula and, you know, I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak, uh, because I think we have to be very mindful about what everybody is doing. I am, and maybe I want to see if there's an unequal distribution. I, I can't for sure say that there is unequal distribution right now. Um, so I just like more information. Yes. The backup materials that were provided to us at the last meeting did show what each member of government would receive from these funds. And I'm not trying to pick on Tampa, but Tampa received the lion's share of $10 million. Yet we've read in the paper lately that there's some, I mean, I think all of our systems could probably stand to be improved a lot for conservation, but Tampa was singled out. And so on one hand, you have a member government who buys very little, maybe sometimes no water at all from Tampa Bay Water, and yet money from Tampa Bay Water's one revenue source, which is the unitary rate, would go to a member government that doesn't buy any water from us. So there's really no benefit to the rest of us for that. So that's just an example of where we need to develop some sort of parameters where it's fair for each member government that does invest in its own conservation already and does buy water from Tampa Bay Water, that at least some way money has to come back to us in a fair way that benefits us as by being part of Tampa Bay okay. Water. Okay, and I'm not disputing anything you're saying, mm -hmm. but I just think we need a whole lot more information to see it in the big picture about how it's going to affect everybody. I'd like to have more of that conversation before we make any decisions, I think. Let me clarify one thing. Uh, we, simp we used market penetration rates to penetrate programs into service areas. We didn't identify that there would be an allocation to there. That's, that's where the potential was at. That's all, I, that's all we did. We didn't say that, and, and I appreciate the comment because it does show that there's money there, but there's certain types of water uses and certain types of programs that could be applied to certain areas. That's where they. That's where they went in the uniform application. So, for example, if there are fifty toilets available in one service area and there are ten in another, uh, and they both equaled sixty percent market penetration rate, one got fifty, one got ten. You're going to have more dense. More density is going to change. Yeah, 
I, I think that's on the part of the information well. there's, there's probably a lot that needs detail. to come out. Mayor Marlow? I, I appreciate uh, where Commissioner Rice is coming from on this. I, and I think over the long term, uh, that probably is, is not a bad goal to have. However, there may be cases where in one particular year, one particular project comes up that would 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 be out of balance with that. And I think if we're looking over over a multi-year period, then then it makes sense. But I, I'm, I'm with you. I think we ought to go slow on this at, at this point with the thought of let's let's think in a in a long term uh, situation so that over time, in fact, we're we're all getting a equal piece of the uh, the conservation money. I agree. Yeah, I think um, yeah, I think you're. I think that's a great point. And yes. I think if we can, um, like, I, I mean, I, I like the idea of not to exceed with that with with special exception almost because, I, mm -hmm. I I think we do have that kind of umbrella thing. But then there may be a project. Let's say Tampa doesn't have any water consumption in a year, so therefore they're not eligible for any. But there's a project there that we really like. Then we ought to be able to, as a board, say exception. Mm -hmm. That project is really exactly. a good one, and, and, we'll, and we'll do it, and just like any of us. But I think we could put that not to exceed number, comma, with special exception, and I think then we can be flexible. Yeah. Um, and at the same I, time I protect that, that upper limit. I um, agree. Yeah, that's fair. So, so Councilwoman you, Rice, can I ask you maybe to withdraw. withdraw, but make a new motion that's asked direct staff to... Uh, come back to us with a report and possible recommendation on a policy going forward. Um, certainly. I will make my motion to direct staff to come back to um, the next board meeting, mm -hmm. maybe a preview at our executive board meeting of a presentation where we have the numbers and we can look at what I suggested, like how that plays out. Yeah, just a, a good policy. Yeah. And I think that was, a, that was a really long motion, and I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new one. I mean, I'll, I'll second that motion. Okay. Any uh, other questions? I think we got to a good place on this. So um, all in favor say aye. 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 I'd like to sign opposed. Show that passed. Thank you very much. And what about D4 and D5? Move approval of D4 and D5. Second. Okay. Can we do two at once? Um, I, I think it'll be fine, given that they were, were both approved. So okay. okay. Um, there's a motion to approve D4 and D5. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Sign and post. Show that passed. Need a motion to um, receive and file. Yes. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second on um, receive and file. Any comments? No. All in favor say aye. 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 Like, sign, and post. Show, receive, and file pass. Just one yes. comment real quick. Um, I have a question. I, um, the, uh, the, the mid-meeting that we were talking about getting a polling information from each of our members, um, I think it, you know, I like the idea of either having a, a second meeting or perhaps having a workshop followed by a brief meeting if any votes are needed on a particular subject matter, but to have a meeting where not an executive meeting. In other words, I think that would be really a good opportunity to discuss some strategic things that we've got going on in a workshop fashion. But then if we need to vote on something, have a short meeting on any items at staff. So just for consideration, we don't have to do that today. I'm just throwing that out. And the other thing, the only other thing I wanted to bring up was uh, my understanding had been as tradition was to have um, uh, Matt Jordan's review today, and uh, so no, I'm, we're going to do that. that we're, we're doing that in August. Okay, we're going to have the. We're yes. not doing it in any kind of uh, executive uh, meeting. We will have a review, a review at the executive meeting with a presentation in August. Okay. Well, I I certainly don't. Unless there's a reason for us to do it at the executive meeting, my whole point was I really want it to be at a at a meeting. That it will we review, be vote. I don't see any reason to do it in an executive. It meeting. will be. I just in case there are any questions, um, wanted to get those covered before the board meeting, and so okay, that questions will be on kind there. of thing, but mm -hmm. not not to get into the depths of the no. review. Okay. Um, and then um, I've asked Barry to research um, some consultants or facilitators for these series of workshops. I think to help. Um, goes through 
uh, some of these major issues and the barriers and opportunities that may be there. So she'll will come back to us and let us know, as well as uh, Mr. Jordan, you'll have your staff uh, get a hold of all the board members to see if um, about every month having a board meeting every month. Yes, ma'am. And we'll report back to you on that. Okay. With that, I don't see any other business. Is there any other business? There is seeing none. We are adjourned. <laughs>